and in the stands here, where, as usual, RFK is a sellout. The Redskins will receive Derek Shepard, just back from injured reserve, a first-year man of Oklahoma is the deep man. Roger Ruzek will kick it off for the Cowboys to our right in blue. From the goal line, Shepard. Loose ball. Recovered by Caravello at the 12-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Garth Jax was the man who put the hit on Shepard and knocked that ball loose. Doug Williams leads out the Redskins, regaining his starting role with a relief job last week that led them to victory over the Eagles. And he, he left and his he helmet on the his bench. Helmet. How about that, Dan? <laughs> Too cold for that, Doug. <laughs> Well, when he gets his helmet, he gets out there, he'll be looking at these guys, and he'll need his hat for Jones, Brooks, Newton, and Jeff Cook. The linebackers, Burton, Lockhart, and Gary Cobb. And the secondary, Walls, with young Robert Williams on the right corner, Bates, and Downs. Downs, the leading tackler for the seventh consecutive year for the Cowboys. <laughs> so Williams, helmeted now, ready for combat. First down from the 12-yard line. Jamie Morris, not much. Back to the line of scrimmage. Ron Burton waiting for him there, number 57, left side linebacker. Jamie Morris, younger brother of Giants Joe, joined by Art Monk, Gary Clark, Terry Orr, and Don Warren at the so-called skill positions. Lachey, Grimm, McKenzie, Mark May, and Joe Jacoby, a shuffled offensive line. They've only been together in that alignment for about three games, and they've got McKenzie there at center starting for the second game in a row. Williams on second down for Muck. He's got it. First down, Washington to their 25-yard line. Inactive players today for these two teams. For the Cowboys, Timmy Newsom and Glenn Titansor. Both uh, injured. Kelvin Edwards been bothered with an, in an injury all season long. They just decided to sit him down today. So they're one under the limit of 45. For the Redskins, R.C. Tillman back up offensive guard. And Travis Curtis, man in a bit of a controversy, will expand on when we get an opportunity. Just acquired via the waiver route from the Phoenix Cardinals. First down, Redskins. Jamie Morris. Over the 30-yard line, a pickup of five. Ron Burton on the tackle again for the Cowboys. Tim, one thing I uh, want to look for today is when the Redskins running game, look for them to try to break that ball back a great deal with Jamie Morris. You see him, he's heading front side over the left side and trying to break it back over center. And the reason why they feel that Ron Burton, number 57, the backside linebacker on that play, may get out of position and they can take advantage of that. Jamie Morris, 5'7", 190-pounder rookie from Michigan, their number three pick. Has the ball again. And again, not a whole lot of running room for him. He got maybe two. It'll leave third down and three. Morris taking over from Timmy Smith, who had the big game in the Super Bowl last year and has been a disappointment this season. Here it is, down in the pit. Now watch, they're going to try to go outside with this play. The key block is Don Warren's. He blocks down and seals Ed Tutal Jones in. But another block does not happen. Terry Orr's block. And as a result, you saw Jamie Morris had to take that second dip. And then he met a bunch of Cowboys. Nick Corral. And we should point out, while he's not listed on the inactive, Kelvin Bryant was placed on injured reserve today. He's been out for several weeks with a knee injury and has just uh, now been placed on injured reserve, gone for the year. Williams, he's got Monk and just overthrows it. Art Monk complaining about a grab down there will not get the call. Doug Williams got good protection on the play. You see Doug is complaining about uh, his receiver, Art Monk, being held. Good protection on the play. He gets a little bit of pressure from the left side and Jim Jeffcoat, but, hey, puts this ball downfield. Monk one-on-one -on -one with the defender and just, just out reaches that ball. Another step, Art Monk goes all the way, and you have six points for the Redskins. Everson Walls, the man he had beat. Kelvin Martin back to receive the punt. Greg Coleman, former Minnesota Viking, third punter this year for the Redskins. Hits it from his 22. At the 29, Martin. Good tackle in the open field by Terry Orr. 39-yard punt by Coleman. 
Cowboys will have their first offensive possession from their 29-yard line when we return. Tim Ryan with Dan Jiggett's RFK Stadium. A chilly day in the nation's capital. Just underway here in the first period. Dallas with the ball for the first time. Steve Pelour coming off a fine effort and a losing cause against Cleveland last week. He was 20 of 32, two touchdown passes. Most importantly to the Cowboys, no interceptions. And he was not sacked during the course of the game. Tribute to his offensive line and his ability to unload the ball. Media shifting foul around the backfield into the slot right. Herschel Walker for about two, maybe three yards. Right side of the Redskin defense meeting him there. Marshall and Olkowitz, the linebackers, coming up into the gap. Man, Butts, Daryl Grant, and Dexter Manley. Manley uh, nicked up a bit last week, but starting today. Nell Kaufman starting for the injured Monty Coleman. Olkowitz and Marshall, the other linebackers. Wilburn, Daryl Green, Alvin Walton, and Todd Bowles, the secondary. There's Dexter Manley. Uh, Hurt his knee last week, but uh, ready to go here. Feeling so good about that Eagles victory. They celebrated like it was a Super Bowl win last week after this difficult season for the Redskins. Walker tripped up on a fine defensive play behind the line. Got just over the line of scrimmage, a flag down, and it was Mel Kopp, the number 55, who sliced in to trip up Walker. Kevin Gogan got a good block on the play. And you see holding Paul. Gogan got a good block, and as uh, he's making his block and turning out, that's when Herschel trips over his leg. And it was Kaufman there uh, in that pileup, and Jerry Markbright will give us a call here, the preliminary signal. Holding point. number 66, offense, second down. And that's why Kevin Gogan got such a great block he was holding on the plate. Actually, what happens now, uh, watch at the top of your screen, number 66, that's going to be Gogan. Gets a block outside and pulls around the corner here. Now watch his block on the linebacker. Now you see that arm draped right across the linebacker's chest, Mel Kaufman's chest, and as a result, he gets the holding penalty. But Herschel was headed up no north on that play. So it leaves now a second and 19. Darrell Clack into the backfield for the Cowboys, number 42, getting some more time in recent weeks. Valora, a deep drop. Sets up the screen for Clack. And Clack gets out to the 29-yard line, back near the original line of scrimmage. Stopped there by Darrell Green. Offensively for the Dallas Cowboys with Steve Ballour. Walker and Todd Fowler for the injured Timmy Newsom. Ray Alexander, Michael Irvin, the wide receivers. Thornton Chandler, the tight end. Dave Wydell, Nate Newton, Rafferty, Crawford Kerr, and Kevin Gogan, the offensive line. Dave Wydell on that uh, screen pass got a great block and kind of cleared things out for Steve Pelour so he could see it, get his vision downfield and find Darrell Clark, uh, Clark on the screen pass. The injuries to Mark A and Darrell Smith earlier in the season. Dave Wydell, a rookie, getting an opportunity to play a lot of football for Dallas. Timeout is called. There's timeout. A little uh, mix-up of the Redskins. defensive substitution it appeared for Washington. And we have this opportunity to send you this commercial message. We'll return to RFK Stadium in a moment. A look at Joe Gibbs on the sideline of the Washington Redskins as Super Bowl champs at 7-7, seven and seven, trying for a winning season and a slender opportunity at a playoff spot. Uh, the Redskins realistic in chatting with us. Uh, nobody's saying, uh, hey, we're still alive. They're mainly uh, just trying to finish the season on a high note, but they know with uh, some luck they could still get in. Third down, 11, lower from the shotgun. Deep sideline for Alexander, and he can't quite bring it in. Off his fingertips, incomplete. The Cowboys will have to punt. Boy, I'll tell you what, Monty Coleman put a shot on Steve Pelour as he released the football. Him coming in on the blitz from the left side. He just leveled him. It looked like uh, Barry Wilburn was a little shaken up on the pass coverage there against Alexander on the sideline. So Mike Saxon comes in to punt it away for the Cowboys. Eric Shepard is the deep man. And a short punt that hangs up in what is now an apparent uh, effective wind out there. Bounces upfield. And the Redskins are going to have superior field position. 
Just a 22-yard punt as Terry Orr covers that ball at the 41-yard line of Dallas. Smart play, special teams play by Terry Orr. Now here's a look at uh, what Washington has to do and what they have to have happen for them. Obviously, they've got to win their two remaining games. Then they need help. The Rams and the Saints must lose their two remaining games. The Eagles have to lose at Dallas next week. And the Giants have to win one of their two remaining games against Kansas City or the Jets. So a lot of good things have to happen for the Redskins. Walk on water like you do dry land. <laughs> it also means two victories by Atlanta. Jamie Morris tripped up the ball, picked up by the Cowboys. Dallas with the football. Michael Downs all the way to the 36-yard line. Jim Jeffcoat put the hit on Morris and knocked the ball loose. Jim Jeffcoat at the top of your screen, number 77, is the guy responsible for this play. Watch him just barge right through, get good penetration. He stops Morris before he can make the handoff to Monk. Now the ball's loose and it's picked up by Michael Downs. Nice little cut block there, too, by the way, by uh, one of the Dallas defenders, helping out his guy when he heads downfield. Now, Dallas has had a problem this season with takeaways. I believe they came into this game at minus 19, and that's the second lowest in the NFL uh, the, the fourth, excuse me, the 28th lowest in the NFL, and as a result, this kind of thing kind of helps them out a little bit. Gets that offense back on the field. Well, you saw the intended reverse went awry. Jamie Morris trying to get it to Art Monk, but Jeff Goat breaking it up. So the Cowboys, after the short punt, have the ball right back anyway. Walker for about three at the 35-yard line of the Redskins. Darrell Grant and Charles Mann combined to stop him there. Herschel Walker having an all-world year, 1,353 rushing yards, 1,825 total yards coming into the game. That's number two in the entire NFL. And he leads the conference in rushing. You can see that uh, Herschel has moved into a tie with the Washington entire rushing offense. Walker again, this time hauled back by Dexter Manley. The secondary coming up to plug the holes and Manley pulling him back from behind will leave third down and six. Now Hamilton, ML come in on the third down play along with Monty Coleman, Vaughn, and Woodbury for the passing defense set up by the Washington Redskins. We were talking to Tom Landry uh, last night. You know, he's waxing uh, nostalgically about the history of football and some of the things he's been able to institute in the ball game. It was actually a very interesting conversation. He actually smiled a few times, too. <laughs> it's a tough season to smile for Landry. Fuller from the shotgun on third down. Flush from the pocket into the sunlight and connects down to the 21-yard line for a first down to Michael Irvin. The rookie from Miami worked his way open on the far sideline, and Fuller delivers the goods. So Michael Irvin is one of those guys who I was referring to in the open, the young players who the Dallas Cowboys really have a, a great future in. And here Steve Pelour finds him down in that right sideline. Pelour moves up in the pocket just a little bit. Now he's going to slide out. Key thing here, though, is Irving is giving him an open spot. You see him coming back to the football right there, makes the reception on the sideline. But Michael Irving is one of those young players that they are really counting on for the future of the Cowboy organization. Dennis Woodbury, the nickelback, made the tackle on him, but the Cowboys now threatening at the 21-yard line. motion the tight end Chandler but whistles everywhere and it looks like they used up the clock this is one of those rules where you know those receivers are downfield and they take time to get back to the Go huddle game. offense first down they take time to get back to the huddle but yet and still that 45 second clock is running and uh, you know sometimes you don't realize that because it used to be once the receiver crossed back across the line of scrimmage and they'd start the 30 second clock but uh, it, it catches a lot of offenses by surprise. 14 games in, you can't be caught by surprise anymore. Well, it, was, it, was, it was cold. It took him too long to get the call in. <laughs> so it's first and 15 from the 26-yard line. And Fleur trying to keep his hands warm out there. And it's under the 30-degree mark here. And shadows already across RFK Stadium. Fleur, incomplete. Intended for Everett Gay. Check it, uh, make it Chandler. Chandler, the tight end, number 89. Ball went in and out of his hands, incomplete, even though they all dove for it as though it was an incompletion. Uh, well, as though it was a drop and a uh, fumble. It was an incompletion all the way. The thing to look for here is possession. Receiver never really has possession of the ball. You see it's stripped right there by Darrell Green. 
Darrell, of course, says, hey, he did have possession of it. I'm going to go after it now that I've stripped it. But really, when he came down to the ground, the ball was already coming out of his hand. Good play by Darrell Green. They were teasing him at practice the other day. He intercepted the pass and ran it all the way back to the score. The Redskins players are saying, gee, that's the first one you've run back in about three years. <laughs> it leaves a second and 15, Dallas. Start in the eye formation. Walker, got a good hole. Three Redskins have to combine to pull him down, and he has the first down inside the 10-yard line. Alvin Walt finally able to hang on long enough to stop him. Simple punch play off the left side. Now, what you're hoping for here, if you're a Redskin, is you want to get your free safety up in here to make the stop. Number 23, Todd Bowles. Now, Todd's going to miss the tackle right there. He's had a problem with that all season loss. Herschel Walker, extremely good running ability, just tugs a couple of guys along with him down the field. That's a guy that can get it all done for you right there. So the Cowboys, first down at the 10-yard line of Washington. First quarter action, 6-12 to go. Walker hit in the backfield and buried by Wilbur Marshall. That was a train wreck waiting to happen. Wilbur Marshall started on that blitz from downtown Washington. Watch him down here at the bottom of your screen, number 58. Here he comes. Timed it up beautifully. Just slices right in back of the pulling guard and meets Herschel about four or five yards in the backfield. This guy's meant a lot to this Washington defense this year. Many people say, well, he didn't get all the sacks. And within the scheme of the Washington defense, he is not a sack guy. He's a guy that wants to make the stops and, and make the interceptions. And as you can see by his numbers, that's what he's done. 123 tackles on the season, 74 solos. Pelour, incomplete, intended for Michael Irvin. And a Redskin defender with a hand in there. He asked Michael Irvin on this play nine out of ten times. He says he'll catch this football, I'm sure. Comes across on a post pattern here, right there. And now he's got the ball. He's got possession of it. It's just stripped away. And Steve Pelour just can't believe this thing. He goes, ah, oh, man, I thought I rolled up money on this one. <laughs> That's getting exciting. Well, Steve Fuller showed a lot of emotion last week. And a real good effort against Cleveland. They lose a heartbreaker near the end, as they have so often this year. He's got a third and 15. Still deep in Washington territory. Complete. Alexander inside the five to the four-yard line. Hit there by Barry Wilburn, saving the Dallas touchdown. There you see Brian Sweeney. Kevin Sweeney, pardon me, on the sideline of offering encouragement to Steve Pelour. Sweeney got into a couple of ball games after Pelour had been struggling and he had his problems. Tom Landry told us yesterday that uh, as long as Pelour is doing so well that they will probably not get Sweeney in there. But if uh, Pelour falters, then Sweeney may see some action today or next week. Roger Ruzek will attempt the field goal from the 12-yard line, a 22-yard attempt. And it is good. So the Cowboys have opened the scoring, utilizing the fumble recovery by Michael Downs. They're on top, three to nothing. Tim Ryan and Dan Jiggins at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. The Cowboys have taken the lead, three to nothing, 4.33 to go first quarter. A 22-yard field goal by Roger Ruzik. And the Cowboys recovering the fumble. Michael Downs picking up the loose ball from Jamie Morris. 34 yards and nine plays, using up 5.07 on the clock. For Roger Ruzek, that's six consecutive field goals from 40 yards or less, and he's now made nine, or rather eight of his last 10 field goals overall. He outlucked last week in that game against Cleveland, when he had made the field goal with 143 to go, erased by the tripping penalty assessed against Randy White, and then missed the 50-yard attempt. Browns coming out on top as a result. Short kickoff out of bounds as Sanders watched it roll out at about the 12 or 13 yard line. And that will not make Ruzik very happy or his coach. Green Bay ahead of Minnesota, seven to zip in the first period. Green Bay has defeated Minnesota eight out of the last 10 games that they have played against him, so that shouldn't come as a surprise. 
Buffalo out to an early lead, uh, stung last week and trying to get themselves uh, back in motion for the playoffs. First team to clinch a playoff spot. You know, we talked about Tom Landry at the beginning of the uh, telecast. Uh, career record speaks for itself. Uh, whether the game has passed him by <laughs> is, is something that people can continue to speculate before we look at the record. You have to, uh, you just have to simply applaud. Play action pass. Williams intended for Monk. He got some pressure just as he released the ball and wound up firing that ball out of bounds. Appeared as Art Monk saw he had pressure outside from a defender, so he wanted to break back across the field. Doug Williams coming off the off the play action past the counter OT. You see his guard and tackle out in front there. And now Doug's going to pull out in there just before he's able to release the ball. He's getting a little pressure there by number 73. Danny Noonan, the second year man from Danny, Nebraska. I was teasing Danny about his moose hair the other day, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's starting to be kind moose. of a glamour boy, isn't he? <laughs> Defensive tackle. Second and ten. Redskins from their own 35. Down three to zip. Williams, complete out to Mike Oliphant, the rookie from Puget Sound. And the first down for the Redskins. Robert Williams on the coverage made the tackle. Mike Oliphant is one of those guys who knows that he's got to struggle in his last couple of ball games to establish himself as a Redskin running back. And you're going to see this guy work very hard all day because he sees these last two ball games as not being a, an established veteran. So you got to make your move then. If you have that little opening, that's when you make your move if you're a Mike Oliphant. There's a young man getting an opportunity with that injury to, injury to Kelvin Bryant to uh, be the third down back. Bryant they had been using as a full-time back and wound up turning into an injury situation for him. Play action again. Williams has lots of time. He's got a man open. Harry Orr down the sideline, driven out by Gary Cobb, but another Redskin first down at the 32 of Dallas. Flag down on the play, downfield. And Jerry Markbright talked it over with his fellow officials. It's going to be against Dallas. Face mask foul, number 59, defense, five yard penalty, first down. That's Gary Cobb, the linebacker from USC who came over from the Eagles to the team which originally drafted him. And talking to Gary, boy, there's a guy, a veteran player with a lot of enthusiasm. Dan had to be impressed with his attitude despite their problems this year in Dallas. He really feels that uh, they, you know, they've come a long way if you look at the, the development they've been able to accomplish over the course of the season. And he likes a lot of those young players looking to the future. Jamie Morris trying to get wide, nowhere to go. Jeff Coat stripping his block, getting help from Michael Downs. It'll be a loss on the play. One of the key things on defense is that you got the front four are playing well for you, which Dallas's front four is uh, defensively then you know that you're going to be able to stop a lot of offenses. Those guys up front get it done for you. Suddenly a team's rushing game is not what it used to be. Now they got to throw the football, and then you start with the pressure of the, uh, rushing the quarterback as well. You know, Ed Tutal Jones might be having the best season that he's ever had as a pro. He's 37 years old. Guy's timeless. Well, and they've had such a good, uh, a good sack attack, if you will, spreading those sacks around. They've got 46 on the season. That's tied for number one in the league with the Rams and the Giants. Williams drills the line drive complete inside the 20-yard line to Art Monk. It'll leave third down and two. We talked about the Cowboys' ability to get to the quarterback. One of the things you do as an offense, if you know that the defensive line can rush the passer, is you start rolling out, moving pocket. Doug Williams slides out to his right and finds his receiver downfield. And you'll see Doug going to Art Monk a lot because Art's going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage and he has been known to make the best of that kind of a situation. He needs a few passes today to move, I think, into 10th place on the all-time receiving list in the NFL. Came into the game with 59 catches. 31-year-old veteran from Syracuse. Third down. Less than two. Williams, lots of time. Complete for a first down inside the 10. Flag down, however. Sanders with the catch. And the line judge Bob Beach was looking right at Joe Jacoby. That may be where the call's coming from. He's working against Kevin Brooks. 
Jacoby becoming the right tackle with the addition of Jim Lachey to the Redskins offensive line. Illegal formation foul, offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. Third down. No, I just saw Jacoby twice, the guy's so big, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like two guys. Hey, you should see his young, his older brother was at practice uh, yesterday, and he's bigger than Joe. That's hard to believe. <laughs> that is hard to believe, 310 pounds. He gave us some good stories on Jacoby that we'll share with you as the game goes on. <laughs> Joe made me promise I wouldn't tell him, but I'm up here and he's down there now. Trying to imagine Joe Jacoby with a bigger brother. <laughs> Third down. Six. The fade to the corner. Incomplete. Intended for Gary Clark, and on the coverage, Robert Williams, just enough coverage to break it up. The ball was right there from Doug Williams. The Cowboys Good have down. been looking for some help from Williams. Uh, they had some problems back in that same area with Ron Francis. Here he just dips in and just gets a hand on the football right there, and Gary Clark goes to the ground, uh, songs the football. Here's Joe this Joe Jacoby thought that last play was a touchdown. He goes, ah, a touchdown. No, wrong, Joe. Whoops. Great job by Robert Williams. 41-yard field goal try by Chip Lowmiller. And this game is tied. So that brings the crowd alive at RFK on a chilly day in Washington. It's tied at three. usual suspects were seen at RFK Stadium and they're up on their feet cheering those hogs as uh, the Redskins have tied it at three and what, what I think I, think I parent, know some of those guys do you some of your friends huh? I think what's apparent is that both these teams are giving it their all out there and the Cowboys despite being two and twelve want this with battle they sure do and they look at it as uh, you know gaining some respect back and I think that that's what they're going to play for I played on some teams that were out of the playoff hunt and you know that that's the thing you start playing for at this time of the season well, we might have you reminisce about some of those years, Dan, with the Chicago Bears. Darrell Clack turning the kickoff, runs into a lot of traffic at the 25-yard line. And the Redskins with a 41-yard field goal by Chip Lowmiller. Last week's hero with the winner over the Eagles. They went 42 yards in six plays to tie it up at three, and the shadows are uh, almost across RFK Stadium. There's a little more cloud around than there was earlier today here in Washington, so that temperature will drop even more. We're is already a, in the high 20s. Is this a weather report here? Or a... Yeah, man, I tell you. <laughs> and that may be because my feet are already ice blocks, and I imagine yours are too. <laughs> no, we used to call this bear weather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bear with it. <laughs> First down, Cowboys from the 25. Whoa! The reverse! Kelvin Martin still going. Loose ball! Redskins come up with it. Well, a lot of stuff happened on that play, folks. Martin actually wound up with first down yardage. Will they rule him down, or is it Washington ball? Hanley and Alvin Walton were in the Cowboy backfield. Boy, well, I tell you what, Jerry Mark better get this one right, because that ball appeared to be a fumble. And I don't know what kind of decision they're going to take on this thing, but you know one thing, it's going to be replayed upstairs to find out what the ruling is. Now, we got a Redskin down on the field at the same time. Someone is uh, injured down on the field. We'll get that Darryl down Green, field. that is, uh, Dan. Look at the play again. It looked like the Redskins were all over the play. Now, watch what happens. Well, they jammed it up in the backfield, but Kelvin Martin comes around. He's got different ideas on the reverse now. Key question here is, does he fumble the football when he is stopped right here about on the 35-yard line? And so make that spin move right there. The ball comes out. His knee is going down. One knee is going down. But that ball is fumbled and recovered by Darrell Grant. Another look at it from a different angle. You'll see uh, Manley arrive there. He gets away from that man. Now Manley sticks his hand in there right there, and then Wilburn comes in and also gets a shot on the ball, and it just comes out, and it's recovered by Darrell Grant. Spin move here. That Hard ball is already out on the ground. I think Darrell Grant recovered the fumble on that play. Well, uh, as you might expect, uh, they're taking a look at all of that you've just seen, and uh, that'll be a tough one to call, I think. 
But uh, good effort by Kelvin Martin, even though he wound up losing the ball at the end of it. The now, reverse uh, turned out to be exactly the right play for the Cowboys because the Redskins were looking at about a five-yard loss handed to the Cowboys as they had busted through the left side. What that also tells you about uh, the Redskins' defense is that you've got to shut down that back side as well. Should not have that reverse work that well against you. After further review, the play stands down by contact. First down, down. The one knee is down on the field uh, as the ball is coming out. That's a timing thing, and I, I still say that's a fumble, and Daryl Grant recovered the football on that play. Well, you heard inconclusive the judgment upstairs, and so the ball will be the Cowboys' ball. And again, uh, one must credit to Martin, despite uh, coughing it up there. A nifty piece of running got away from Daryl Green on his first uh, shot at him. Shook off another Washington tackler, and there's a guy that's only 5'9", 160 pounds. Raiders and Buffalo tied up at 7 in the first quarter. Green uh, has made it to his feet, headed to the Redskins' sideline. Giants on top of Kansas City. We'll be tracking that one for you as it affects things here in the NFC East. Giants masters of their own destiny as the uh, expression goes in terms of the playoffs. Clarence Vaughn comes in from Darrell Green. And it is first down Dallas at the 36 yard line of the Cowboys. This Ruttle Washington crowd lets out the booze. Play action floor. In and out of the hands. That off the padding of Michael Irvin. You could hear the ball smack onto his shoulder pads in his chest area. And bring it in. Second down. Players affectionately nicknamed the football the rock. Well, today, and it's that cold out, that thing is a rock when it hits you. It doesn't give you any compression at all, so it makes it very difficult to hold on to the football. One of the things to look for in a Dallas offensive line, now Dave Waddell is doing, a, I think, a very good job against Dexter Manley. You haven't seen Dexter too active in the backfield uh, of, the, of the Cowboys. And now they, they switch up their tackles. They've got uh, Daryl Smith in there as well. Daryl Smith, you usually see him on the passing downs. They've got a second and ten. Dave Waddell, a rookie from Boston College, been a pleasant surprise, unblocking well. That's complete. Michael Irvin. As a first down, Cowboys. Near midfield. Good protection on this play for Steve Pelour. And watch the uh, left side of your screen. That's Daryl Smith. He's going to come back and, and drop back and block Dexter Manley. He's in great shape. Good shape by the guards. And Michael Irving, this is a chance, a little confidence builder for him. Drop the other ball. You go back to your young guy. Let him get another shot at it. Irvin with 24 catches coming into the game. Their number one pick bothered with an ankle injury that saw him miss some games earlier in the season. Cowboys in the eye. Herschel Walker barrels his way up the middle and gets near the 45-yard line of Washington. Walton and Bowles, the safeties, wrestle them down, and that's no easy task. Todd Bowles is a guy who, as they always say, is one of those guys that lives on the bubble. He's been having a difficult season, and he's got to have two good football games for the remainder of the season. To stay as a starter for these Redskins, it would appear. Well, we've reached the end of the first quarter. It's been a tough-played football game, and it's tied at three. Tim Ryan with Dan Jiggett's RFK Stadium in Washington. A 3-3 football game. We begin the second period here. The Redskins, remember, uh, clinging to a slender playoff hope. They need a lot of help, and they must win their two remaining games. Next week, they'll be at Cincinnati. That's a Saturday game, 12.30 Eastern time here on CBS. And it won't be any warmer there. You see Doug Williams down there on the heater. I wish he'd send one of those up here. Redskins have moved into a 3-4 defense. They've got Raven Caldwell, who had three sacks last week against the Eagles. In is the extra linebacker and the pass rusher on the right side. And here he comes. Pelour in trouble. Is set. The man to get him, Neil Olkowitz. Charles Mann there with him, and the pressure was considerable from young Raven Caldwell. That's right. That's what causes the sack for Neil Olkowitz. You're going to see at the top of your screen, number 50, that's going to be Raven Caldwell coming in on the blitz. He's really unblocked because he just avoids Daryl Smith here. Good little head shake move. Now he grabs Steve Floor. Steve feels the pressure, runs right into the linebacker, Neil Oakwood's on the escape. So a good 
good defensive effort by the Redskins on that one leaves a third down for Dallas now backed up to their 49 yard line. Third down, about nine. Four wide receivers are in. On the shotgun, Valor. Pressure from Coleman gets the ball off well. Herschel Walker out of the backfield, short of the first down, however, by about a, a yard, yard and a half. Steve Gage, number 48, six back, and Alvin Walt making the tackle for the Redskins. And the Cowboys send on the punting unit. A very good defensive series for Washington. And you can see the uh, long underwear there that uh, Manley's put on today, adding a little color to the Redskins <laughs> uniform. Anthony Allen is the deep man, waiting the punt from Saxon. First-year man Derek Shepard had been handling the duties uh, when the game began. Just came off injured reserve, but he's been replaced by Allen. Saxon's short punt fielded by Allen. Allen stumbled forward as he caught the ball, got to the 20-yard line. Garth Jacks on the hit for the Cowboys. And we wash the ball when we return. Tim Ryan and Dan Jiggets back at RFK Stadium, and here's how things have proceeded so far. Chip Lomeller gave the Redskins the lead, three to zip. Roger Ruzek, a 22-yard field goal for Dallas, and Washington minus five rushing. Jamie Morris been dropped. Four losses a couple of times and uh, also fumbled the ball once. But, but the amazing thing is they still have been successful in selling play action passes at the same time when their running game is not going well. Let's reverse that uh, instead of reading what was on the picture. Uh, Ruzek gave Dallas the early lead and Lomeller tied it up. That's where we stand at three. Redskin ball. In and out of the hands of Monk. Second down. Shadows now almost completely across the field. I would assume that the temperatures have got to be about five degrees colder than our 29 degree kickoff reading. Boy, I tell you, you are all over this weather. Well, I'm watching a lot of drop footballs out here, Danny. That's, that's, that's one thing. We've seen drop passes, we've seen some fumbles, and you got to believe this uh, first real cold <laughs> afternoon of football for the Redskins in Washington is starting to have effect on both teams. Second and ten. Williams overthrows Gary Clark. Robert Williams on the coverage for Dallas. We note that uh, Doug Williams trying to keep his hands warm. He's wearing gloves, and uh, Steve Pelour is not. Little fashion note for the quarterbacks today. <laughs> but the, the, the nice thing you talk to Doug Williams, he's a guy that's dealt with so much adversity in his life. And he's a guy that every time you turn around, he comes up, comes back swinging. You have to admire a person like him and all the things that he's gone through in his career to still be one of the better quarterbacks in the National Football League in the field of Super Bowl last year. Well, he never squawks about his adversity, too. And I think that's never does. Admirable. He's back there as the starter today. Get some time. Deep again for Sanders and overthrown. Ricky Sanders couldn't catch up with that bomb from Williams, and Washington will have to punt. See, these people here, they know how to stay warm in this weather. It's a Washington crowd. They know how to, how to keep it going down here. Most of those folks up on their feet there, stamping them. <laughs> the toes warm. In Chicago, we call that the Chicago bop. You know, everybody knows how to stay warm on the street corner. Kelvin Martin is the deep man awaiting the punt from Greg Coleman. There's Martin standing at his own 46-yard line. Coleman kind of line drives it. Pretty good punt. Backs him up behind the 40. And Martin gets to the 47-yard line. Hit there by Kurt Govea. 41-yard punt by Coleman. So pretty good field position for the Cowboys. Next week, the Redskins will be in Cincinnati against that tough Bengals team, needing a victory here today and needing one next week and a lot of help still to make the playoffs. 
12 o'clock Eastern time of the NFL today. And then following our NFL activity, college basketball. The Paul's Blue Demons against the Hoyas of Georgetown, ranked number four. Beat up on Shenandoah. <laughs> yeah, right. Big <laughs> win for uh, John Thompson and company. <laughs> Shenandoah. Give me a break. Walker. Breaks away down the sideline. Finally forced out at the 25-yard line. He put a straight arm on Wilbur Marshall and churned all the way downfield. Most difficult thing in the world to do if you're a linebacker is cover somebody like Herschel Walker coming out of the backfield one-on-one. -on -one. You see him slide over to the left side of the screen. Now he's going to just slip right through the line of scrimmage. Neil Okerwood's got has a beat on him. He sees the block coming. Now Wilbur Marshall has him wrapped up there, just slips off of him like a sweat. And Herschel just heads down that sideline and then gets down out of bounds. A little late shot there. 25-yard pickup and a first down Dallas inside the 30 of the Redskins. Walker, loose ball. Cowboys have it. Walker recovering the fumble and just a problem with the exchange between Fleur on a quick spin handoff. It appears now, watch what Steve Fleur after he makes the fumble. Watch him turn around like he just tried to reach the ball over there a little bit. Herschel's a little bit too far away from him. He recognizes it right away, dies on the football, and Fleur started back to it as well. But he's really stretching out to try to get that ball to Herschel. Yeah, he needed to complete uh, a, a 360 there, and he didn't quite make it. Got to about uh, 350, I think. Second down at 12. Play action. Incomplete. But a hit on Fleur as... Daryl Grant got the heat on him, and Alexander took a shot from behind as the ball arrived. That can really shake up a young quarterback when he gets stuck like that, just as he's releasing the football. Doesn't have that kind of security he likes to have back there in the pocket. Right about there, that's when he's going to take the shot. He's releasing the ball to Alexander. Alexander goes up in the air, should have had the uh, reception on the play. Like I said, it's cold down there. <laughs> Third down at 12. A lot of gloves on those players today. Yes. See who the tough guys are. There's Pelor. His offensive lineman, no sweatshirts, nothing on these days. Very uh, right, yeah. I don't like that. I like Pelor here. He's, he's going bare-handed and throwing the ball pretty well. <laughs> Intended for Alexander again, out of bounds, incomplete. Harry Wilburn on the coverage. Wilburn with three pickoffs in three consecutive games after having missed the six games out with a knee injury. Redskins glad to have him back on the corner. He's really beginning to hit stride too again. It's unfortunate for him that uh, you know it's a very difficult situation for the Redskins to make it to the playoffs because he's now just kind of getting back in that groove that he was in last season when he was an uh, all-pro player for the Skins. So Ruzak will attempt a 48-yard field goal on fourth down. He's got one already that gave the Cowboys the early lead. 22 yards away, this one a little different. Ball starts to hang up on him, incomplete. Ruzak, who had a long of a 50 yard of this season, and the windy conditions at RFK falls short and wide. We're still tied at three. Well, Roger Ruzek uh, missing that 48-yarder and the wind conditions here, Dan, are, we talked a lot about uh, the cold and the wind here, and they've been a little strange. There you see the flag blown one way. When he kicked, it was blown the other way. Look at the turnaround. <laughs> and then look at the goalpost uh, ribbons. They're just laying flat. There's a swirling wind that comes right up over the top of this uh, stadium. So the Redskins have it first down. In the original line of scrimmage on the Dallas fourth down, and that's just inside the 30. Jamie Morris has a little running room. Picks up about five. See the strength of that short man. He's not a little man, he's a short man. Three huge cowboys unable to get him off his pins. Jeff Coat, Randy White, a couple of uh, loads, you might say, 260 each. Look at him get lost in that huddle amongst Jacoby and the rest of those guys, Mark May up front. Again, we talked about before, though, the Redskins are trying to run that little breakback play, and that was a clear example of it there with uh, Jamie Morris. Five-yard pickup for Jamie Morris. Play action, and it is almost picked off. Intended for Gary Clark, 
He's looking for an interference call. Everson Walls had the coverage. The ball went off his hand. It didn't appear that Everson ever saw the football. It seemed like it just skimmed right off him. Now, right in the middle of your screen, that's where Everson Walls is going to be coming across with the coverage on Gary Clark. We'll play action here. Jamie Morris, nice pickup on Eugene Lockhart. And right there, Everson just saw the ball at the last second, tips it up and tries to get it to one of his defensive backs. Clark didn't see it at all. It's one of, look what I found things up. Third and five. Monk in motion behind the ball. Williams with time, has his man, Art Monk. First down, Redskins, to the 49-yard line of Washington. Manny Hendricks on the tackle. Nickelback number 45 for the Dallas Cowboys. The Redskins know they can get Art Monk loose up underneath of the defense, and that's what you're seeing a lot of him doing, those little short crossing routes. He's coming across the, the face of the defense after the, the other wide receivers have vacated the area, and that's why they're getting that ball over to him. So the Redskins near midfield now with a first down. Again, Williams hit just as he delivered the ball, and he had Sanders wide open. And it was Randy White who got a piece of Williams, and he saw Sanders, who was absolutely alone downfield. He, he saw the score and the scoreboard change on that play. He's dropping back now. He's got Ricky Sanders going all the way downfield. And now watch Randy White here on the strong rush, leaps over a couple of guys just right there. That's when Doug is trying to deliver that football. And now look at Ricky Sanders. He's running down there, and the only thing that's close to him is the end zone. Doug just could not get it there. Wow, credit the veteran Randy White. Just got that hand on the chest of Williams. Right now. Williams, that one batted down by guess who? Head to Carl Jones. Made a career out of batting those down, and Josie can still do it at age 37. But well, I tell you what, Ed Tutal Jones has a better batting average than a lot of guys in Major League Baseball. Comes from the uh, right side. Now, Doug's looking over that way. Now, watch Tutal reach up both hands on it. Boy, well, I tell you what, that's a slam dunk right there. But that's one of the things he does. He's a controlled defensive end, likes to rush up the field, get in position, and then go for the football. And when you're working against a big tackle, and I talked to Jacoby about this the other day, you know, he's 6'9", and, and Jacoby's 6'7", or 6'8". You want to get that guy down, so you've got to hit him in his, in his stomach in order to bring his hands down. But the first thing you have to do is block it. Well, he hasn't had a lot of work against Jones, because Jacoby's usually been on the left side during his Washington career. Played in college a little on the right side in the Pro Bowl, but a new experience over there against Big Ed today after all these years. <laughs> Third down. it out for Clark. Oh, right off his fingertips, incomplete. Gary Clark accelerated at the last instant, nearly caught up with that ball. The one, problem, a good cover. the one problem Doug Williams is having is he's not having enough time to set up and establish himself in the pocket. Now watch here again. He sets back there, but he's got pressure on him by Randy White. Jim Jeffco jumps up in the air. He just can't set up back there and put that football up like he wants to. Now, real close down here, Gary Clark almost has the touchdown pass. But Randy White, number 54, with big pressure again on Doug Williams, and that's the kind of stuff that'll get your quarterback set down late in the season. Time around Lachey. Randy White still showing some spring in his legs. Ray Coleman's punt. For Kelvin Martin at the 15. Good return by Kelvin Martin. The ball came loose, but it's down by contact with the ground at the 35-yard line. Dallas ball, first down there. 37-yard punt, but an 18-yard return. So Dallas, pretty good field position when we return, tied at three. So those are the luckier folks at RFK. They're on the sun side of the stadium. As things have gotten a little chilly here at RFK, Tim Ryan and Dan Jacobs, 10.05 to go first half. Dallas opened the scoring with a field goal by Ruzik. Chip Lomeller tied it up. Dallas football now at their own 35-yard line after a good punt return by Kelvin Martin. Herschel Walker straight ahead for seven, maybe eight. 
Daryl Grant tripped him up, number 77. Grant, the leading tackler on the front of the Redskins with 101 tackles. And look at what's happening here rushing-wise so far. Neither team dazzling, but Washington with only one yard. Well, it's really apparent that Washington misses the services of Kelvin Bryant. And, and Timmy Smith really hasn't done anything for him uh, as of late. Uh, and as a result, they've had to go to a lot of play-action stuff and then, of course, try to stretch the field with going downtown to Gary Clark and uh, Art Monk. Second down and four. Steve Folsom, second tight end. Makes the strong side of the right end. Walker again for about two, but a flag down. Dexter Manley indicated he's got a holding penalty on the play. And Nate Newton. Yeah, Manley always is willing to help out the officials. Oh, yeah. Those uh, difficult selections as to who is the culprit. That's why he's got those stripes on that uh, <laughs> other shirt that he wears. Right. Holding number 61, offense, second down. Nate Newton, he's the number 61, comes across on the trap and tries to hit Dexter there. Gets him up around the arm and then locks that arm up in there. And that's a tough call if you're an offensive lineman. I've got to defend Nate Newton on that play. The defender's working against you, uh, away from you, and you try to spin out. You know, you try to lock up on him a little bit. You always, uh, always uh, try to defend those offensive linemen, Dan, and that's all right. But here's what Dexter has to say about them. He says, all offensive linemen who hold should get 30 days in jail or one week coached by Mike Ditka. <laughs> well, I had more than one week coached by Mike Ditka. <laughs> <laughs> Second down at 15. Pallur in all kinds of trouble. Got the ball off. Well, they call it an incompletion. Charles Mann had a tackle on him. And they may call it a sack. I think you have to call this one a sack because he was definitely going down and tried to unload the football. Either that or they're going to call downing the ball on it. But it looks like the officials are going to do neither. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mel Kaufman leading that charge over there. Charles Mann comes off on a delay. Now you see him dip back inside working along with Dave Butts. And Sarch is rushed now. There's a little pressure there. And now Steve Pallor gets yanked down. But the question was, I guess his arm is going forward. So the officials say, hey, look, he was unloading the football. And Dave Butts almost made the interception on the play. Injury report on Darrell Green. A fractured wrist will not return to the game. Steve Gage is in. Irons Vaughn is in. Extra defensive backs. Timeout is called by Dallas. Dennis Woodbury replaced Darrell Green on the corner, number 46. And Steve Pallur evidently didn't like the look of what was out there defensively facing him, so he's over talking things over with Tom Landry and company. And you, you, think, you start thinking about uh, Steve Pallur and what he's gone through this season, and he's, hear, he's hearing all the talk as well about the, you know, the trade and bowl and all the rest of that kind of thing. And, and now, uh, you know, you try to settle down the last couple of games of the regular season and try to get your act together and control the things that you can control. You don't know what's going to happen in the front office, who they're going to draft and all the rest of that. You just try to do your job, take care of your business, and let every, all the chips fall where they may. The other principals in that uh, derby were standing there on the sideline. Kevin Sweeney, who would like another shot at a starting role, and Danny White there in the uh, civilian clothes on injured reserve with a knee injury, and Tom Landry says that he is still in his plans for next year. There's Danny on the left of your screen. And obviously, he'd like his experience back as a uh, backup, whether uh, White wants that or not, we'll find out next season. Third down at 15, the crowd arousing the Skins defense. Tied at three, 8.46 to go, first half. Pallor just got it away, and it is caught for a first down by Darrell Clack. Out near midfield. Steve Pallor deserves the Courage Award for getting this pass off because he's going to get pinned in from three sides. He drops back. Now watch this pressure on him. He gets it from the middle and from both sides. He just gets wrapped around in there like a pinball. Ball's flooding downfield, but uh, Daryl Clack comes back for it. Once again from the pit. Now watch this pressure I was talking about. Both sides. Charles Mann, Dexter Manley squeezes it on him, and he gets a safety in his face as well. That's Alvin Walton. Wow, he looked like a pinball there being bounced yeah. around. But he got the pass off, and Clack with a good effort for the catch. First down, Cowboys. They're on 49. Screen, Clack. Clack for another Cowboy first down to the 35-yard line of Washington. And a flag down on the play. Darrell Clack, the third-year man from Arizona State, has watched uh, Dorsett. 
Herschel Walker be the main men in the Dallas running attack. Getting some opportunity in these closing games of this season. Done a good job. Seeing some time at fullback and halfback. But it's a hole against the Cowboys. Signaled by Jerry Markbright. Line judge Bob Beeks came in with the call, and that's his responsibility. Looks straight down that line of scrimmage. Illegal blocking foul. Number 68 on the offense. Still first down. Illegal block called against Crawford Kerr. And Jim Herkin, back of the uh, Cowboys offensive staff, says has uh, been the most consistent lineman, given the highest grades over the season for Dallas. And that group of young players on that offensive line, uh, the only stability really coming from Rafferty in terms of uh, years of experience. You look at guys like Crawford Kerr to, to be your mainstays. Kerr, a four-year man. Logan and second-year man. Newton, a third-year man. Wydell, the rookie. Daryl Smith, a second-year man. Walker. All the way down to the Washington 29-yard line. Barry Wilburn forced him out. There's a flag that was thrown on the play, and the flag actually ended up on the sideline on one of the photographer's shoulders. That's how much that wind is blowing down there. Big hole at the left side. Face mask ball, number 45, defense. Five yards, first down. Barry Wilburn with the face mask grasping only a five-yard penalty, but still the... Cowboys with a great run and the penalty have themselves now at the 23 yard line. We talked about Nate Newton on a trap before. This time he's coming back the other way, 61 right there. He throws a key block for Herschel Walker. Herschel slides out, avoids a couple of linebackers and Todd Bowles. Mentioned the fact that he had a problem tackling earlier and now he finally goes out of bounds. You see, it's just a slight face mask there. That penalty is really uh, one of those ones that shouldn't have been called. Delores pass batted away. I believe Dave Butts got a hand up on it. Dave Butts, 88-year-old veteran, six foot seven, knocking that one down. We're talking with Dave uh, yesterday, asking him whether or not he thought he might want to come back for another season. He said that you know his, the ankle's getting healthy. He had that problem with it earlier in the season. He said, yeah, you know, I think I want to come back for one more. He, he wants to finish it up the right way. And, and I think that if you look at his career, he's a guy that deserves to finish it up the right way. defensive play cutting between blockers and hauling down Walker from behind little if any gain loss of maybe a half yard Gerald Grant is one of the few defensive linemen for the Redskins with over 100 tackles and that's the you know that's the job you want one of those guys inside to do you want one of those guys to be a stopper for you a big stopper and that's what Daryl Grant does Redskins go to their 4-0 defense now Dallas uh, rushing the ball with uh, Walker particularly and Darrell Clark helping out effectively. 6.6 .6 average so far. Stopped on that play. Third and 11. Delore trying to find an open man. He's got him. Touchdown. Michael Irvin. So the Cowboys the good teams tough all season long They're taking the lead again against the Redskins rookie Michael Irvin all alone in the corner and Fleur rolling out found them easily a 24 yard strike now the crowd at RFK quieted by the first touchdown and it's scored by Dallas. Ruzek for the point after. He's got it. Michael the Irvin. Cowboys. 10 to 3.
Now here's the touchdown play right along here. The Redskins have nine guys on the line of scrimmage. It's only these two guys that are back in coverage. Everybody else is coming on the play, and that's how come Michael Irvin gets gets loose back there in the secondary and in the end zone. You see, there's only two defensive back there now. You see him coming back across. Michael Irvin is wide open now, and nobody's even covering him. Alvin Walton didn't see him until the last second. Now, they got a little thing that they do down here in the end zone as well. They like to celebrate a little bit. Michael Irvin takes his bow. Thank you, gentlemen. Almost breaks the football down here in the end zone. Now, watch this little thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, he's a rookie, but we'll let him get away with it. <laughs> now, Dallas taking the lead here. 65 yards in eight plays. 3.24 off the clock. Culminating in a 24-yard touchdown pass to Lure to Irvin. 6.41 remains in the first half. Going just along the way, the Skins have lost Darrell Green to a fractured wrist. This play is taken by Dennis Woodbury on the corner defensively. Washington. Fielded at the 11 yard line by Ricky Sanders. Sanders works his way over the 25. Hit there by Steve Diazzi. Well, a lot of folks still uh, hoping to find themselves in the NFL playoffs. Uh, quite a list there. The Bears have uh, clinched here in the NFC and all those other teams are still with a shot at it. Washington, slender hope, as we said, but uh, if good things happen for them, and I guess the big question, Mark, is they need two victories by Atlanta in Atlanta's two final games. Now, the Falcons have been playing better the last few weeks, so anything can happen, but that uh, might be only a fond hope. First down. Redskins at their 26. Trying Jamie Morris straight ahead. Kevin Brooks with the stop on him. Joe Gibbs said about Jamie Morris, he hadn't been all that impressive in the preseason practices and so on, training camp, and uh, then ultimately decided he's the kind of guy you need to look at for maybe 15 carries a game before you can really get a sense of uh, how he can hurt you. It's not, you're not going to see it necessarily on the first few carries for him. Five foot seven, 190 pounder, it's a lot to ask of him being the, the one back in this Washington offense. Hardly a Riggins look-alike. Riggins uh, look-alike. Williams, wide open, Terry Orr. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Bill Bates drove him out. Terry Orr getting the start for Craig McEwen, who's bothered with an eye injury. Comes up with a big one there. Billy Bates has, has got Terry Orr one-on-one. -on -one. Man coverage because they're blitzing here. You see... Ron uh, Burton coming in, number 57 on the blitz. And now you see Terry Orr streaking across the middle of your screen. And actually what happens is Billy Bates gets picked off on the play. And as a result, Terry Orr is heading down that sideline with the football. But Bates got picked off by a receiver just as he was trying to make the break and stay with Terry Orr. Your dear man from Texas has a first down for Washington at the Dallas 41. Amy Morris gets about three. Ron Burton, the linebacker, number 57. That, that play has become the staple of the Washington Redskins. It's the, the counter OT or the Trey OT. Now watch both of these guys here. They're going to pull over in this direction, block up here, and block out there on the play. And that's what's been getting it done for the Washington Redskins. Those offensive linemen, particularly those tackles like Lachey and those guys, they like to pull every now and then. You know, get out and show everybody how fast you are and throw a couple of blocks downfield. All that athletic ability. <laughs> You know, it's amazing, the versatility of that group. We've had five different lineups along that offensive front. Lachey coming over in the deal with the Raiders for Jay Schrader, and he's fit in very well indeed. Second down, Williams. Hard pump. Spinning around Manny Hendricks, and it looks like he's picked up the first down. Well, I tell you what, that move was so nice after the catcher, Art Monk, that Manny Hendricks ought to ask him for an autograph on the play. Now, Doug Williams looks over on that left side. He's looking at him all the way, finds Monk on the break. Now, watch this little shake move here that he puts on Manny Hendricks. Boy, I tell you what, that's sweet. Now, it gives him another little one back there. Manny Hendricks is still trying to figure out where he is. Five 
fine effort by the veteran Monk. He's got him a first down inside the 30. Cowboys send on some new troops here for first down. Burton comes back on. Back to their base defense. Washington in the eye. Play action and Williams hasn't got a man. Has to throw it out of bounds. Mark was down deep in the end zone. I don't know whether Williams saw him loose. Uh, credit the secondary, though, of, of the Cowboys with good coverage there. Doug Newyers running out of time. Took an awfully deep drop that time, about 12 yards. Couldn't find anybody back there right away. So he says, hey, look, I'm just going to dump the ball up here because I know a worst situation is I'm at least in a position now where I can get a field goal out of this thing. But if I get sacked back there, suddenly I might take myself out of that position. I wonder how cold it is in New England. They're scoreless at halftime, I see, on that score. And Houston on top of Cincinnati. That's a big game in the AFC today. Mike Rozier has 94 yards and both touchdowns for the Oilers. Second down. Art Monk short of the first down, but got to the 21-yard line. Hendricks made the stop there, leave third and about a yard and a half. I'll tell you what, Art Monk is playing schoolyard. You know, when you're a kid, you're playing, you say, let's draw it up on the ground. Okay, I'm going to run in and do an in pattern here. Just throw me the football at about five yards. That's the way, the kind of game he's been having today. Just catch everything in sight. Monk has five catches, 58 yards on the day. You see, he's warming his hands, too, Tim. Uh, you're all over this weather thing, as I told you. <laughs> and he's got gloves on, too. First down, yard and a half. Williams for Monk, and it's picked off by Emerson Walls. Walls is down as he intercepted the ball. Looked like it went right in and out of the hands of Monk, and an alert play by Walls picking it off. So the Redskins, with a good drive going, are stuck. Watch on the right side of your screen. That's Art Monk going in motion now. Doug Williams looks him off, now comes back to him. And this ball is delivered on time. There you see it just dribbles out of Art Monk's hands, and Everson Walls makes the interception. The key is he was in contact there with Art Monk after he made the interception, and therefore he is down. Mark May didn't know about it, though, number 73. He's doing it in the wrong place, too. He's over in that Dallas bench doing that. It's not a good spot to be at. Eugene Lockhart wants to get a little taste of it. Oh, okay. He's ready for Mike Tyson, too. Well, huh? I, wanna, I thought it was Herschel Walker was challenging Tyson. <laughs> Oh, he's got the hands up there. Gil Clancy, our boxing analyst at CBS, to admire that technique. First down, Dallas. Kelvin Martin. Good ankle tackle, or he might have gone a long way. Todd Bowles, as Martin made a nice move, and had he got moving, that kid can fly. Todd Bowles made that tackle. We talked earlier about how Todd Bowles has been kind of on the bubble, if you want to use that phrase. And as a result, the, uh, the Redskins decided to pick up Travis Curtis from the, uh, the Cardinals earlier this week. And it really upset Gene Stallings because Gene felt that, you know, he was bringing his guy back off injured, injured reserve early because they really needed him in that game against Philadelphia. And one of the reasons why the Skins got him is because they feel that they need some more support at that position. Well, that was a steal that did not make uh, Phoenix uh, happy at all. Sideline to Martin, complete for a first down, Dallas. Right at the sideline, 47-yard line of the Cowboys. Look at this little guy, Kelvin Martin. He does a lot of things for the uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Look at the special teams area as well as uh, receiving, and he's a very valuable asset to this ball club. Another one of those little smurf receivers. You know, the guy's about 5'9". You get a lot of things done for you very quick. Second-year man from Boston College. 24 catches coming into the game, and looks like he lost part of his uniform on the last play. Now over on that sideline, watching him tip-tap both of those feet in there. Boy, I tell you what, he looks like he's been around a while. It's kind of one of those uh, Barishnikov moves there. And it looks like the officials are not sure that he they, got them both well, in. Well, see, the one thing that, that they're looking for is after he made the reception, you saw him take that long step out of bounds. And the thing that they're wondering is, did he tap both feet before he went out? Now, let's get another look at it right here on the sideline. There's one. 
and he's dragging the toe on the other foot. Well, it looks like he's dragging the it toe. It certainly on the other does. Foot. That falls into your inconclusive category, in uh, my judgment. That After further review of the play stand, first off, it's going to stand uh, because it's just one of those ones where, from the pictures, uh, you can't be certain. It looked like he was dragging his toe, but uh, can't tell for sure, so the play stands. Well, the side judge, uh, Quinby, was right there. Number 58 was right on the play and took a real good look at it right on the sideline. First down, Cowboys. Herschel Walker hit by Dave Butts behind the line. And be a loss on the play of about a yard. As we approach the two-minute warning here at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., the Dallas Cowboys with a 10-3 lead over Washington. Dave Butts of the Redskins have made that last tackle at 38, the second oldest player in the NFL behind Joe Ferguson. They're both 38, but Joe a couple of months older. This past week at a luncheon here, a lot of people expected he would perhaps announce his retirement. Dan, you mentioned you'd like to see him come back. He kept the door open, indicated he liked to play. Still angry at the old St. Louis Cardinals and their owner, Bill Bidwell. He said, they said I wasn't worth a darn to my face. It was a brand they put on me. I've lived with all my career here in Washington. They may have sent it to his face, but it was probably at a distance. Well, the players that went for him will tell you in a minute. You can see whether Dave's made up for it in the meantime. Pelour <laughs> complete to Kelvin Martin. That is Dennis Woodbury in pursuit, but not before Martin has a first down at the Washington 28-yard line. Lee Pelour on target to Kelvin Martin. Neil Olkowitz with the rush of Dexter Manley in the conversation. Yeah, he's uh, discussing the Cold War situation and the fun of the Cold War situation. Flag down on the plate downfield. We have a five-yard first pass foul on number 83, the ball carrier. Five-yard play is still first down. Uh, I guess Jerry Mark probably said turn around is fair play on that. That time, Kelvin Martin gets called for the uh, face mask. Fairly unintentional, however. But he comes across on display a slanting pattern here. Number 83, Kelvin Martin. We were talking about it earlier and how valuable he is to the, cow the Cowboy organization. Now, as he's stumbling here, he tries to straight arm right there, and that's where he gets the face mask call on the play. But it's unusual to see a receiver get a it face mask. It is unusual. Mask. Yeah. Uh, they're really calling that a lot today. I guess they're afraid that uh, someone's going to get an eye poked out in the whole process. Uh, Martin uh, having himself quite an afternoon here in the first half for Dallas. First down. Redskin territory at the 33. Good fake by Pelour. Got lots of time as a result, but here comes Manley. And he has to throw it out of bounds, intended for Walker, and a flag thrown there, where Mel Kaufman had the cover. And Alvin Walton made a nice reception of the flag there right along the sideline. Caught it for the official, hands it back to him. It looks like interference charged against the offensive team. Pass interference, number 34, offense. First down. What Herschel was trying to do is make sure that Alvin Walton didn't get to the football. None of the uh, Redskin defense got to the football, so it was drifting out, and he was pretty well covered on the play, so you prevent the other guys from getting the ball. I'll just go back quickly to the Dave Butts trade, see if anybody remembers uh, who the Cardinals received for him. Steve Pizarkowitz, Ken Green, and John Barfield. And I'd have to say that uh, Butts outlasted all of those guys. Set quite a career in Washington. First down Cowboys, but backed up. Delore with time, as his man Martin. Martin diving, nearly dropped the ball. Fell on top of it. Picked up about 10 yards, and it'll leave second and 10 to go again. Kelvin Martin once again working one on one against Wilbur. Is Wilbur turns his back on him just for that split second. And that's when Kelvin's able to make his break back to the football. Yeah, he has a nice little thing he does here. After he catches the football, you saw him drop it right there, but then again he recovered the fumble. But he has this nice little move after he, he makes the reception. That, that's that little thing that makes him kind of special as a receiver. But then again, little receivers can get away with things like that. Four catches today for Kelvin Martin. Second down and ten. Herschel Walker blasts his way forward for about six. And we 
We have 51 seconds remaining first half with a timeout on the field. Dallas on top. Tim Ryan with Dan Jiggins. RFK Stadium. The Cowboys took their second timeout. 51 seconds on the clock. They have a seven-point margin in frigid RFK Stadium. And the ball at the Redskin 29-yard line. Shotgun formation on third down. And five. Ball never came up. Everybody left and the ball stayed. The lure 11 of 20 at this point. Having a good first half for Dallas. Ball starts on the offensive line. Third down. They're all going to blame it on the center. They said, you should have <laughs> snapped the football. How about Green Bay on top of Minnesota? As I mentioned before, Green Bay has beaten Minnesota eight out of the last ten times they have played. Should not be a surprise to any fans following the, the Vikings and the Packers. Well, except that the Packers have only won two games, Danny. <laughs> yeah, but they, one of the games they won was against the Vikings. That's right. And the Bears tied with Detroit at three, so those are two critical games in the NFC Central. Coming up at halftime, Brent Irvin Dick will bring you up to date on all of the important activity today. Kalor intended for Walker incomplete. Again, pressure on Kalor from Steve Hamilton this time, number 64. Steve Hamilton came into the game replacing Dave Butts to give him a little bit of additional pass rush, speed on the pass rush, and he was very effective on that play. So fourth down upcoming for Dallas. 47 seconds remains. First half. It appears that Dallas is getting a, 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 little, a little feisty here. They're going to go for yep. it on fourth down. Why not? Fourth and ten. Long setback with Pelor and Walker. Four wideouts. Pelor deep for the end zone. Intercepted by Wilburn. Well, you have to feel that that was probably out of uh, range for Roger Ruzek, especially in the windy conditions here. So that turns into uh, the same as a punt for Dallas. Here's the play again. Might as well go the, for it. From the end zone, good interception by Wilburn. He just plays it perfectly, center fields it, and just grabs it. One of the things that happened on that play again, though, was as earlier, the Redskins had nine men up on the line of scrimmage coming in the blitz situation, backing off out of there. Only had two guys playing deep in the secondary, and I'm sure Steve Fleur said, hey, look, I can get another touchdown off of this thing like I did to Michael Irvin. 40 seconds for the Redskins to try and make something happen. Sanders, the motion man. Flags are down. Williams, Mike Oliphant, Picked up about five, and whistles blow with 33 seconds on the clock. Illegal procedure preliminary signal against the Redskins. Williams, five of 15, passing first half Illegal for motion Washington. Ball, number 83, offense. First down. That's Ricky Sanders. Now you start thinking if you're Doug Williams and that uh, Redskin offense, the thing that you want to try to do is work the sideline with only 33 seconds remaining. But guys like Randy White make it a little difficult for you to try to set anything up. And you also know that the Cowboys defense is only going to let you come into the middle of that field and burn up the clock. Let me correct uh, Williams' pass stats. He's now 8 of 20 for tap. Oliphant, not a lot of running room for him. Vince Albritton coming up to put the stop on him. 19 seconds remain. Well, see, a defense is going to give you that kind of a play. They'll give you some screens and whatnot, but they're not going to let you throw downfield and work your guy out of bounds if they can help it. Anything that goes downfield has to be run to the inside of the field. So the Redskins use up a timeout. Williams uh, will talk over what... He should be trying here on this second down play and about 15. Not a lot of options here with only 19 
seconds remaining, and you're back up on your own 15-yard line. <laughs> and you heard about the press there. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> Oh, down here on the sidelines for the for the uh, photographers. Right off right now, I see well, it. Well, I tell you, when our guys in the truck are giving the press a bad name, you know, <laughs> the half is not even over. <laughs> yeah, some cold drinks and some ice cream will go just fine at halftime for those guys. <laughs> Second down, 14 required for the first down, and Dallas with four guys playing way downfield in the secondary. Intended for Sanders, intercepted on the deflection by Hendricks. Gets out of bounds with 11 seconds left. Boy. Robert Williams tipped it up. I don't know if Manny Hendricks was ever out of bounds, though. And certainly, we're going to get another little peek at that one. Here it is from the end zone. Manny Hendricks off the tip gets the interception. Williams looks off his receivers quite well. Comes back over to that left side now. Watch the ball get tipped here. Hendricks intercepts the ball. Now, see here, does he go out of bounds? Yes, he does. Okay, that foot is out of bounds. It's on the white mark. No problem. Still a great opportunity for the Cowboys at the 30-yard line. They've got 11 seconds here. They lead 10 to 3. Second interception suffered by Williams. Both of them on tips. One by his own man, and that one by the defender, Robert Williams. Into the hands of Hendricks. Galore steps up, finds his man, Kelvin Martin. Martin gets into the 18-yard line, and the Cowboys take their final timeout. Four seconds left. The guy on the spot again is Roger Ruzek. And uh, the wind this time, at least from the top of the stadium, is blowing in the right direction for him. Yeah, who knows what it's like down there. It could be in his face. The ribbon's kind of spinning around on top of the goalposts. And they're going to spot the ball at the 27-yard line, just inside the 27, so it'll be a 36-yard attempt for Ruzek, who has a 22-yarder and was short on the 48-yard attempt. See them planting that turf down there, a little loose on this natural field at RFK. and it is wide. He had the distance. The ball was wide to the left. And it seemed to hang up again in that direction. Nonetheless, the Dallas Cowboys will take a 10-3 halftime lead into the locker room. RFK Stadium, Washington, D.C., with the Dallas Cowboys lead 10-3 as we are about to begin the second half. And you can see uh, most of the success has been by Dallas in the air. 196 yards on 14 out of 25 for Steve Pallor. Doug Williams, 9 out of 23 passing first half. And again, I think just that, that spirit and spunk of the uh, Cowboys has had a bit of an edge on the Redskins so far. Well, they certainly have, particularly you look at the Redskins rushing game, which has been virtually non-existent all day today. That's because the, the Cowboys defense has been playing them strong and tough up front. And the other thing is, if you think about the Cowboys' offense, they've come alive in this ball game, and they have played people close all season long, and as a result, they feel that they're in every ball game they play. Actually, Washington had the ball for 12.09 to 7.51 for Dallas first half, but Cowboys made the most of their opportunities. Low Miller's kickoff deep and will not be brought out by Cornell Burbage, and Cowboys will start first down from their own 20. And if you can just use that kick as a gauge, it would appear that uh, there's a noticeable wind difference blowing in that direction. Steve Pallor comes out barehanded. He has passed successfully in the first half, coming off a good effort last week in the losing cause against Cleveland. And I would think Tom Landry's got to be happy with his uh, quarterback in this first half, Dan. Yeah, uh, look at the numbers there. I mean, that's a, that's a good first half for any quarterback. And Steve Pallor had had his problems at the middle of the season and was benched for a while, but he's come back strong in a lot of part of the regular season. Herschel Walker shifts into the slot left. In motion behind the ball, the tight end. And it's Todd Fowler. Fullback number 46, picking up about three. 
and some extracurricular activity at the bottom of the stack. Well, Wilbur you Marshall know? and uh, Dave Wydell. Well, you know, tackle. Wilbur was right in the mix there. <laughs> <laughs> Never a shrinking violet, uh, Wilbur Marshall. Well, you look at the, guy, the way that guy is built, and that, I mean, that, when you see him walking around, you know, that's NFL linebacker walking around. This guy is so muscled up, it's unbelievable. Had a couple of ovens that he uh, won the other day, a couple of microwaves. Wouldn't even share them with the other fellas on the team. I thought he was going <laughs> to give one to his dog. <laughs> For a doghouse? Second yes. and seven. First down pass to Alexander. Ray Alexander. Florida A&M in the Canadian Football League. Injured reserve a year ago has been somewhat of a surprise for the Cowboys this year. 49 catches coming into the game. Olkowitz and Clarence Vaughn on the tackle. In talking with Ray Alexander, he recognizes the fact that he is one of those young guys who this team has come to do, depend on and certainly uh, recognizes the duties and the responsibilities of being a starting wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, you had to like his attitude, but they're, they're looking ahead. The young players know what they've got in Dallas, and they're ready to wipe the slate and get something happening next year. Well, flags everywhere. The ball never came up. Were they drawn, or did they jump? And it looks Both like Dallas will get number it. 16, offense. Well, they call it against Pelor. Against Pelor. Maybe a hard count call on him. The ball never came up. He gets the penalty. Well, the one thing you can't do is if you've not been moving your head or shrugging your shoulders as a quarterback and you suddenly do it on a hard snap count, which I think Steve Pallor does here. You see him jerking those shoulders down. That pulls that defense off. And that's what a lot of times the officials will look at and they say, hey, look, you didn't do that before. And suddenly he tried this hard snap count to bring those guys offside. And that's what happened. Well, we mentioned uh, in the second period that Darrell Green left the game for Washington with a fractured wrist. Dennis Woodbury took over at that time, but now the Redskins have Clarence Vaughn, number 31, second-year man from Northern Illinois on the right corner in green spot. Herschel Walker gets back over the original line of scrimmage. A six-yard pickup stopped by Alvin Walton, and it will leave second and nine. Herschel Walker comes again on a nice little slant up in here, right in the middle of the uh, defense. You see a couple of traps. Nate Newton again gets a trap on Dave Butts. One thing the Cowboys have been trying to do is take advantage of that, that over-pursuit and aggressiveness of the, of the Redskins' defensive line by trapping them once they get across that line of scrimmage. Redskins shift to the 3-4, something they don't use too much, but it gets Raven Caldwell in the game, number 50, the extra linebacker. And Pelor changing up here as he sees that new Skins defense. Walker picks up four. Mel Kaufman on the tackle. What he's looking at is he's getting a, something very similar to that 46 or bear look. So he's going to try to work outside on that thing. An injured cowboy down. That is Dave Wydell, the left tackle. Boston College rookie. And with that timeout on the field, we'll take this break. And be back in a moment to RFK Stadium. Now Dave Waddell goes down on the play. Here he is right here blocking his man. Now what happens is as he's going along on his block, he gets stripped over from the backside by one of his own linemen. Now just right about there at the top of your screen, you'll see him going down. And look at that knee up in the air. And that's the one that went out on him. Still being picked up off the field as we speak. And now they've got him on his feet and uh, is being assisted off by a couple of teammates. That'll bring Daryl Smith into the game, number 79, who plays normally on the obvious passing downs. And now that evidently uh, Wydell just uh, unable to take that weight on his legs, so they're going to carry him off. Don't forget, we've got more football action ahead. Look at that critical game. New Orleans at San Francisco. That's the big one of the day. Atlanta at the L.A. Rams. Now the Redskins, should they win here today, will be cheering for Atlanta. They need two Atlanta victories this week and next week in order to uh, have any shot at a wild card spot. They need some additional help, too, but uh, that game will be very important to Washington should they win here. If they lose to the Cowboys, sayonara. Third down. Dallas at their own 39-yard line. Kalor under pressure, deep for Martin, for uh, Irvin. Michael Irvin will score. Down. 
Steve Pallor with all that heat. The blitz on. He saw that coverage. Woodbury against Irvin, and Irvin comes up with it. And again, what happened on this play is the Redskins had nine men up on the line of scrimmage, two defensive backs. Woodbury's in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Michael Irvin, and he simply gets beat. Dennis Woodbury was having a tough time when we were at practice on Friday covering men one-on-one. -on -one. And it was kind of funny then, but it's not very funny now when you see it in the ball game on Sunday. Michael Irvin, a 61-yard touchdown pass from Steve Pallor. And Pallor uh, cementing his position in this Cowboy quarterback picture of his performance so far today. Ruzek with a point after. And Dallas, with only two victories on the season, takes the lead 17-3. Now, the Redskins have been in this defense three times, and three times Steve Pallor has gone downfield, threw two touchdowns and one almost touchdown, and that's the kind of pressure you get after you release the football. But, hey, he knew he had struck money and gold down there with Michael Irvin for the second time today. And the same defense, two defensive backs, everybody else up on the line of scrimmage, and uh, Steve Pallor just takes full advantage of it. And as a result, the Cowboys lead 17-3. Well, Pallor had struggled through much of the early part of the season. Uh, a quarterback uh, not reached maturity as yet in the, the view of uh, the coaching staff made critical mistakes at critical times but last week against Cleveland an outstanding game and doing well here today look at Houston over Cincinnati in that game the Giants beating Kansas City 14 to 6 and New England still with playoff hopes alive Tony Eason started that game today in place of uh, Doug Flutie he hasn't played since uh, 1986 I think in that Houston game, Gomer Esaias with only seven yards passing into the third period. Of course, Cincinnati already into the playoffs. Houston trying to get there. Sanders the deep man for Washington. Ruzek's kickoff. Short at the 19, Sanders. Straightened up by Bates at the 29-yard line of the Redskins. Let's have another look at that touchdown, Dan. Tim, I'd mentioned the fact that the Redskins had nine men up on the line of scrimmage. There you see all nine of them. Now, that means there's only two defensive backs back there in the secondary. What happens is at the bottom of your screen, Michael Irving is working against Dennis Woodbury on the play, and he just simply outruns him. And Scott, uh, Steve Fuller just lost that ball up, and Irving's got great speed downfield. This guy out of the University of Miami just makes that over-the-shoulder catch and styles into the end zone. So Washington now will have to crank it up. Doug Williams and company at the 29. Jamie Morris on first down. The ball is loose. Looks like the Redskins have recovered. Art Monk alertly spotting that ball. Had to climb over a Dallas defender, and he did come up with it. Jamie Morris having a little trouble holding on. Tim, I remember when we came in uh, with the Chicago Bears, when I was with the Bears, we came in to, uh, to RFK Stadium. The Redskins needed to win the last game of the regular season in order to get, to get into the playoffs. And they played much the same way then as they are playing today without that team, that spark and emotion that you would think that the team would have if they can make that stretch run and, and quite possibly get into the playoffs. They did not seem to be turning enough that extra notch that you need to to get the job done. Well, they got about 15 minutes left to do it, a playing time this third quarter. Morris for a first down, Washington, and for an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger, New York. Well, Sam, this is the uh, fair touchdown that finally put them ahead. It was a quarterback draw with Harbaugh, huge hole in the middle now, and it's 10-6. Meanwhile, the Giants a short time ago put a second touchdown on the board. They're leading the Chiefs 14-6, back to 10. All right, Brent. Well, you just saw the first rushing first down of the day by the Redskins. 9.53 to go in the third quarter. Trailing 17-3. to They have a first down at their 41. He wants to throw to Gary Clark. He's got it. First down to the Cowboy 40. Bates on the tackle. This is the point in the game if you're the Redskins and, you know, you're the former champions of the National Football League. This is when you start picking it up. Now let's look what that front line is doing for Doug Williams. They're giving him protection, keeping those throwing lanes open. Gary Clark comes across the middle for the reception. 
But that's now the mark of a champion when you come back, even when you, you may not make it to the playoffs, but you bristle up a little bit and you say, hey, we still got something left to fight for. Well, Gary Clark uh, himself was uh, the one saying that in the locker room on Friday, that uh, we want to win these last two games, have a winning season. We're not thinking about the playoffs. That's unrealistic. Need too much help. Williams, for months, incomplete. Doug Williams is complaining. He says his receivers are getting jammed all the way down the field. Dallas uh, just dominated Washington offensively. Dave Fuller's uh, second consecutive solid outing. In fact, uh, even though they didn't win last week, he had himself a real good afternoon, and so far he's been the boss today. Doug Williams trying to Rank it up here for the Redskins. Such a leader. The 40-yard line, second and 10. Incomplete. Mike Oliphant looked like Albright might have got a hand on the ball. And a good try by Oliphant to bring it in. Lockhart then arriving as Oliphant tried to make the grab. Doug felt that he was running out of time in the pocket. He really had some more time, though. Now, you'll see him slide over to his left just a little bit here. And now he throws it off to Mike Oliphant. Oliphant tries to come back for the ball because it's thrown behind him. Makes a great effort there and just barely misses the football. That was a good effort. Third and ten. And he's starting or the defensive uh, line coach for the, <laughs> for the Cowboys. I said, that's what a coach looks like. Ernie Stott, great guy. <laughs> Sanders in motion. Williams going deep. He's got Sanders. Touchdown! <laughs> 40 yards, the score. Williams to Ricky Sanders. Doug Williams off the play action. Hard to believe it. you can have successful play action when you don't have a successful running game. Doug Williams finds Sanders downfield. Uh, he just stretches this one out. He's got Manny Hendricks beat all the way. Get that one-on-one -on -one coverage when you, you have your safeties come up and they react to that play action pass. And, oh, he just trips down in the end zone. There. That's not the graceful way to exit after you make the touchdown score. 40-yard <laughs> touchdown strike. Low Miller with a point after. The Redskins right back in the thick of it. 8.45 to go. Third quarter. Dallas leads it 17 to 10. Now, I said this was play action, but it really isn't. But watch these guys right up front. They take on their man real strong up on the line of scrimmage. They see those arms shooting out, and they're stopping their men right on the line of scrimmage. Gives Doug Williams all kinds of time to look downfield. And finally, he finds Sanders in the end zone for the touchdown. Nice adjustment by Ricky Sanders turning around. And running away from the, the defender into the end zone. Now the crowd into it here at RFK. Low Miller nails the kickoff. Five yards deep. Cornell Burbage will not bring it up. And as we see the scoring drive here for the Redskins. 70 yards on six plays. A 40-yard pass. Williams to Sanders. You know, you picked up something there, Dan, on the way they blocked on that pass play. It's something they started last week against the Eagles, having not uh, done it frequently in uh, during the season. The offensive line decided they would that short? push out like that. Yeah. yeah, and it was very effective. They caught the Eagles unaware. Now it's uh, used to effect here against Dallas today. What, what it does is allow the quarterback to get that, that spacing between his offensive line and his setup in the, in the backfield. First down, Cowboy. Play action for Pelour. He'll run it. Up to the 29-yard line, short of the first down by about a yard. Todd Bowles there to cover him. We were talking with Coach Landry uh, yesterday. We had, one of the questions I wanted to ask him was about the Dallas shift. When you see that offensive line go up and then go back down, and he confirmed something that I heard a long, long time ago, and that's the fact that they started to do that shift to disguise the offense uh, so the defense lost sight of the offense for just that second and at the same time allowed them to do some motion in the backfield. So it does have a purpose, even though it looks like they might be doing some fancy dancing. <laughs> second and less than a yard for the Cowboys. Time 
tight end Chandler in motion now behind the ball. And Walker blasting for the first down. Really fired off the ball. And while well, he's pushed back, he had the first down easily. Hey, what if you want to stop him, you better bring some help. Well, the help came from Bowles, Olkowitz, and Marshall, and he still got the first down. <laughs> and he was really firing. He had a, a walking stick that someone had apparently given him uh, a few uh, uh, last night. And, uh, he was kind of kind of excited about that. It had his name carved in on it and all the rest of that. And, uh, you made a comment about it. A handsome walking stick. I think it's called a knot carry. He was proud to have it. Mr. Walker Dallas Cowboys carved on it. A fan here in Washington. And Walker again. He gets about two to the 35-yard line. Todd Bowles meets him there. Wilbur Marshall. Walker, as we pointed out, coming into this game, the number two in combined yardage in the entire league, just uh, having himself an outstanding season. Bears on top of Detroit. Look at this, 16 to three now. Don Mikowski's 11-yard pass to Patrick Scott. From the Vikings, who have been really playing well lately, trying to catch the Bears and being roadblocked by Green Bay. Second down, eight. And Cowboys change up at the line. It appeared Walker finds a good hole and he may have the first down. Very close to it. Looks like the spot will be first down, Dallas. Jerry Mark Price says, yes, it is. To the 40 three-yard line of the Cowboys. Okay, now you're the linebacker. This is what you're looking at, number 34. Got a little draw action back here. Herschel takes the handoff, and here he comes. He gets the first down on this play, of course. Now look at that leg drive. Nice little lean forward there, just as he's reaching that goal where he wants to get. That's the first down marker, and he got it. Of course, those big guys up front, guy, you know, Look at Gogan and those guys. That's the reason why that thing is working for him. That running game is working because those men up front are blocking for him. Play action fake to Walker. Pass to the tight end, Chandler. Gets about eight as he stumbled with Walton hanging on him. Got to midfield. We talked to Herschel Walker and he said, hey, look, I want to be the total complete football player. You just saw him run for the first down yardage. Next play, he comes back. That play blocks Raven Caldwell coming in on the blitz, number 50, and simply takes him out. Now, watch over on the right side of your screen. Watch Herschel Walker come in and get a nice block on Caldwell here. Right there, he puts it on him, takes those hands down right away, and uh, Steve Floor is able to complete the pass. Walker in trouble, but breaks loose. Tripped up, diving, trying to get to the first down marker. Wound up with about a three-yard gain, but short of the first down. Byron Spawn tripped him up. Walker came into this game needing 147 rushing yards to be the best-ever season rusher for the Cowboys. He's got 80 today. Dorsett set that mark in 1981. 1,646 yards. But you look at more game, of course, uh, has... Yeah, you look at overall, though, I know Herschel wants to have the same kind of consistency over the years that Tony Dorsett had. Third down and two. Walker again. And the Redskins may have stopped him. This will be close. This will be close. From our view, it looks like the Cowboys have it, but uh, we'll wait till they unstack. Charles Mann, Neil Olkowitz, jamming up the middle. And it is short. Fourth down, less than a yard. Hunting unit comes on for the Cowboys. Anthony Allen goes back to the 10-yard line of the Redskins to await the punt from Saxon. Field and the Cowboys will down it at the Washington 24-yard line. Flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Just a 24-yard punt into the wind. 
Google man downfield, and somebody left a little early on the play. See, the one thing you know about Jerry Mark right in his career, Jerry doesn't miss very much, you know, so you, you can't argue against him too much. This guy's a good official. Illegal man downfield on the kick. Kicking team, penalty declined. First down, timeout. We have a timeout at RFK Stadium, 3.18 to go, third quarter. 17 to 10, Dallas. Now these Redskin fans are tough here in the cold weather. Senator Muskie's there, cut the fur hat and the gloves. Sergeant Shriver now on the baseball business. Groups of uh, Kennedys, Leslie Stahl from uh, CBS is there, and Jack Kent Cook, owner of the Redskins, entertaining as always in his box. And Shooting on his Redskins. Williams almost picked up. Throwing it on a rope intended for Oliphant. Eugene Lockhart diving out to try and make the pickoff. Eugene Lockhart right there. Look at Adam. Hey, this guy. Now watch him drop back in the zone here. You see him take off in that zone. He's making the read. Watching Doug Williams all the way. You see his eyes never leave Doug Williams. Now watch him come over here and almost make the interception. Boy, he had that one. We talked to him last night. He said he was ready to play some football and beat up on some Redskins. And he almost beat up on you when you call him Jim Lockhart. Well, I tell you, he was really, uh, he was <laughs> wired for sure last night. Doug Williams, meanwhile, down and down and hurt on the rush. That's Noonan on him. A lot of weight. 285 pounds of Danny Noonan. And you see Doug is fighting a little bit, trying to get up off the ground there. Well, as they attend to Doug Williams, we'll take this time out and return to you to RFK in a moment. Mark Rippon warming up on the sidelines as Doug Williams injured on the last play. We've got a long way to go in this game, 3.13 to go in the third. Here Danny Noonan comes in on Doug Williams after Doug Williams has delivered the football. Noonan is making his move. He just simply runs right over Doug Williams. Doug Williams is down on the ground, and uh, they are still tending to him. And now he, uh, it appears they're trying to pick him up off the ground and bring him over to the sideline. But Mark Rippon will come in and play for Doug Williams. And Tim, you had an opportunity to talk to uh, Rip yesterday. Yes, his attitude about uh, being uh, given the hook last week was a very healthy one. He says, hey, I've had my shot to uh, start for the Redskins. And he said, you know, I just didn't get it done. And, uh, he understands that uh, there's going to be a lot more football ahead for young Mark Rippon. We see uh, Williams kind of tenderly coming off of that uh, passing arm of his. Griffin goes on the field, so we'll try and get a report on Doug Williams. Sure that he, either was the wrist or the arm, and of course he had a little problem with the arm last week, uh, and he had to come out of the ball game and was re replacing after replacing Mark Griffin. Yeah, that was a bruised shoulder, so yeah. we'll see if there's a connection here. But Mark Griffin is on, second-year man from Washington State. Goes right to the air and hits Gary Clark. Clark wants to run with it, but he was down. Ron Francis for the first down Redskins Mark Rippon starts off one for one and a first down it looks like he might have hurt his hand either that or it's frozen I think that cold weather that you've been talking about <laughs> all day has got the rip <laughs> uh, he'll have no excuse he's from Calgary Alberta now when you're talking cold you're talking Calgary now he gets a little bit of pressure here Raleigh McKenzie's trying to help him out up front but Kevin Brooks finally gets to him just as he releases the ball but that just kind of rolls him up a little bit. Quarterbacks get used to that. That, that helps heat him up a little bit in the ball game. Well, he did take a smack on the hand, but he's got a first down. Jamie Morris. Morris gets about six. Running straight ahead. Gary Cobb and Eugene Lockhart to stop on him. And Williams uh, limbering up over there. See how that uh, arm feels or the hand or the wrist. We didn't get a report from the Redskins as yet, but it looks like he's all right. 11 of 27 today. Bomb to Sanders, bringing the Redskins back to within seven. 40-yard touchdown strike here in the third quarter. Jamie Morris burrows his way for about four yards, leaving a third and about a yard and a half. Cobb on the tackle. Once again, that's that same little play up inside and try to run it over the left side, bend it back over the center, and try to squeeze up in there and get maybe, maybe about four or five yards out of that same play. Morris now up to 25 yards on 12 carries. On this 
Third and short, Ed Simmons comes in as an extra blocker up front, along with Craig McEwen. Play action. Deep for Terry Orr. He'll score. Touchdown, Redskins. Stadium 17 to 17. Well, I tell you what, Mark Rippon came in, and who said you can't cook with cold grease? This guy comes in off the bench, play action there to Jamie Miller, uh, Mars. Now, Rip just lets it fly downfield, and Terry Orr has got his guy beat all the way. You see, he's pulling away to that sideline that sets him up, gets away from Michael Downs, and he just heads in for the six points. But the key thing is that play action really pulled everybody up, and look at that reaction by Rip. <laughs> Jamie Morris is jumping up to try to try to hug him. <laughs> I need the ladder to do that though. Mark Rippon. Well, I don't know how he stayed warm on the sidelines in this uh, rather chilly RFK, but he certainly delivered there. And Terry Orr with the score. Word on Doug Williams, bruised shoulder, evidently the same problem uh, he had last week. You know, he, when we asked him about that on Friday, oh, it's no problem. You know, you got to play with it. That's the way it is. That's the way. Pass the turn Doug is, whatever is required. And it wouldn't be no surprise to see him uh, come back into the ball game. But meanwhile, Mark Rippon delivers. Well, Miller is kicked out to the four yard line. Darrell Platt for the Cowboys. Out to the 26 yard line. Well, this one really developing into the kind of a game you would expect from these great rivals even though they don't have the big stuff on the line today and we've got big big stuff ahead New Orleans at San Francisco and our double header action some of you will see Atlanta at the LA Rams and the Falcons coming on and Chris Miller getting better and better each week at quarterback for Atlanta the Rams off to such a great start this season staggering a bit lately and uh, Washington hoping they can get help from Atlanta today. And Atlanta no longer is a gimme in the National Football League. These guys have really been playing well. The Rams are very much aware of that. So Dallas led in this ball game initially. Took the lead at halftime. Now into a tie. Fuller, Alexander, first down. See, this is the thing you have to like about these young Cowboys. That, you know, a situation where you could be deflated when the, the other team, the opposition, gets the touchdown, the big touchdown pass on you. But you see what they do. They come right back. Bloor is firing out to Ray Alexander. These guys are going to stay active, and they're going to fight you right to the very end. And that's the reason why when you look at 89 and what they're going to come back with, Tom Landry's got to be excited and want another shot at ending up his career on, a, on the correct kind of note. First down, Dallas. Chandler in motion. Screen pass. Clack. A flag on the play as Clack runs into traffic at the line of scrimmage. Got only a couple. That'll bring us to the end of the quarter, but we have a flag down on the play. Maybe a block thrown downfield on the screen pass. Herschel Walker was in the general vicinity. Number 88, offense, penalty declined, second down. Okay, I'm sorry, Herschel. I don't want him to come after me with that stick. <laughs> okay. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Cowboys 17, the Redskins 17. We now pause for a word from your local station. 
They are bundled up at RFK, but they're seeing themselves quite a football game. We head into the fourth quarter. Dallas with a football, second and eight. At their own 38-yard line, short drop for Pelour. And his receiver goes down. Everett Gay, the intended receiver, number 80. Flags are down. Late flag, mind you. Irons Vaughn, number 31, had the coverage. He's in there for the injured Darrell Green. You see Todd Bowles is trying to keep Clarence out as his aid. Don't mouth off to these officials because it just gets worse from there. And as they sort this out, I think it's... Uh, it's Pass number 31, defense. Give it to Vaughn. Interference on Everett Gay. Watch the lower right-hand part of your screen, number 31. That's Clarence Vaughn. Good jam there on the line of scrimmage on Everett Gay. Kind of runs him into Herschel Walker, but right about there, you see Gay has gone, already gone down to the turf, and he kind of dragged him down to the ground on the play. Well, it is first down, Cowboys, from their own 45-yard line. Pelour changing something up here. And Walker is buried for a loss. Flags again. Ball came loose. Redskins have it, but the uh, ball will be retained by Dallas. Boy, I tell you what, Wilbur Marshall made that play, though. You saw him come and take on the running back and clear out the interference and then go for the ball carry on the play. like to be Jerry Mark right and explain it to those Redskins you're making that call Especially Big them. Dave Butcher came up with the ball. <laughs> Jerry's gonna call his own time out here. Get the call from upstairs. You see the communicator talking with the replay booth. But uh, more importantly, let's look down in the pit now. Dexter Manley down at the bottom of your screen, number 72. He gets a good, uh, Nate Newton gets a good pancake block on him. He kind of threw him down to the ground. I know Dexter's going to complain about that being called a pancake block, but what else can you say? The guy that makes the play, though, is Wilbur Marshall, number 58. Extremely good play coming in, stopping that back in the backfield, and then coming back and jamming up the ball carry. Here's Manley again working against Nate Newton. If he gets it, Nate Newton weighs about 310 pounds, and I might be being kind there. He just kind of slings Dexter to the turf. Well, now the replay man has uh, ruled that that's going to be Washington ball. The ball apparently came loose in time for the Redskins. Holding number 61 on the offense is declined. First down. As the Redskins, Daryl Grant made the hit. The Bucks came up with a loose ball. And while it may have appeared that uh, he was down by contact, the replay booth says it is red skin ball at the 40-yard line of Dallas. Here's another look at it. Nate Newton is the guy that got called for holding it. That has already taken place now. The ball gets popped out right here. Herschel is spinning around, and as he spins around, the ball is coming out and hits the ground there. Or hits uh, one of the Dallas offensive linemen. I believe that's Rafferty, and it's already... Fluttering That's along on the ground is recovered by Dave First Bucks. down, Washington. First down, Washington Redskins. So a big break for the Redskins there. They have the ball at the 40-yard line as we are just underway in the final quarter. The Cowboys, who against seven playoff-caliber teams, have lost by an average of 3.7 points a game. All of those decided in the fourth quarter. They do not want deja vu here. They led this game 3-0, 10-3 at halftime, and they're now tied. Jamie Morris on first down gets a couple. If you, if you were watching that time, Joe Jacoby, he slipped out, got on the, on Eugene Lockhart, put a real good stick block on him. He thought the play was set up, and he looked back, and he saw his running back had not escaped out of the backfield, and he was very upset on the play. Pickup of a body yard is what they gave Morris. Mike Oliphant, the lone setback now, four wide receivers. Oliphant is dropped right at the line of scrimmage by Ed Jones. No gain. Now let's go to New York for an NFL update. Third and goal for the 
Detroit against the Chicago Bears, Tim. It'll be James up over the top for the touchdown. Detroit leads the Bears. This is apparently the only thing that can stop Chicago from wrapping up the division today. But the Lions missed the extra point, sitting on two. Back to Tim. Oh, all right, Brent. Uh, interesting events in that game and the Green Bay, Minnesota game. We'll be tracking them for you the rest of the way. Third down. Rippin. In and out of the hands of Ricky Sanders. And the Redskins will have to punt. Ricky Sanders will be down on the bottom right-hand part of your screen. Runs a curl pattern in here, and he's got to catch this football. That's all there is to it. He's got to catch that ball. It's in his hand. He just flat out drops it. Sanders coming into the game with 64 catches, crossed the 1,000-yard mark in reception yardage, reception yardage for the season. 11 touchdowns. He hasn't dropped too many like that. He's been having an outstanding year. Delvin Martin is back with a punt from Gray Coleman. Off the side of his foot. Might turn out all right, depending on the bounce. Inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. Coleman not too happy with the effort. A 23-yarder. We're tied at 17. Well, there is a quick look at uh, what's happened in the game. Doug Williams leaving with a bruised shoulder that caused him to leave briefly last week before he came back to lead them to victory. Michael Irvin, a pair of touchdowns for the Cowboys. And Washington held a 25 yards rushing. It's tied at 17. It has not been a terribly elegant game throughout. But what you have to admire, Dan, again, is the spunk and spirit, particularly the Cowboys, but also the Redskins coming back. That's right. You look at the Cowboys having lost 10 ball games, straight ball games coming into this one, and they're still fighting. And that's the thing you like about them is that they're showing their character as a young ball club. Now, at the same time, you look at the Washington Redskins and you realize that Mark Rippon comes in off the bench and he's cold and goes downtown on the play action pass here for the score. All the way down to, San, uh, to Terry Orr for the score. Six points, Washington Redskins, and that's what's got things tied up. So Dallas, after the short Coleman punt starting from their 17, first down. Delor, and that one dropped out of the 44-yard line of Washington by Everett Gay. Coverage by Clarence Vaughn. Just enough movement by uh, Vaughn and Todd Bowles to break it up. Here it is. Everett Gay's trying to adjust back to the football. Uh, and the problem there for him is Clarence Vaughn has made the adjustment already and is in position because he is looking back at the football. He will not get a penalty as a result of that. Bowles came back kind of holding his left arm. Might have hurt himself a little bit on the play. But Vaughn was the guy who did the job in the coverage. Buffalo beating up on the Raiders. Herschel Walker. The Redskins shut him down. Maybe a loss of a yard. Bowles and Olkowitz. And credit Dave Butch was really destroying the, the flow of the play. He comes through and pressures up field. As a result, Herschel Walker had to try to bounce the ball outside and just cannot do it. And Todd Bowles comes up and makes the stop. That's the kind of play that the Washington Redskins won out of their free safety. Third down, Dallas. Redskins with the crowd support here at RFK. The defense seems to be really pumped up here. Dallas is rushing game, obviously superior today to Washington's. Four and a half yards of carry, but the Redskins surging up to shut down Walker on that one. Delore intended for Kelvin Martin, who looked outside. The ball came inside, and he was open. It appears that uh, Steve Pelour is trying to guess on the timing pattern, trying to figure out when his receiver is going to make the break there. Good little escape move there right off the line of scrimmage. Now, watch him come out of the break. You see, he's breaking out of, the, out of his pattern there, and Steve Pelour's already let the ball fly. So the Dallas Cowboys will have to punt. Saxon's punt headed for Anthony Allen. Takes it on the hop and then fumble the ball. It'll be Dallas ball. Anthony Allen tried to scoop that ball on one hop. 
Ken Norton came up with it for Dallas. Costly error by Anthony Allen. Now, when a ball is bouncing around like this, and you're the receiver back there, just get away from the football. If you can't pick it up cleanly without someone being in your face, get away from it. Allen makes a critical error here, and Ken Norton, number 51, is right there to jump on it. He's kind of casual about reaching for that football. Keep your eyes on it until you tucked it away. Norton did, certainly, and now the Dallas Cowboys have the football back. Norton off IR and back in action for the Dallas Cowboys. Four turnovers by the Redskins. First down, Dallas. 47 of Washington. Herschel Walker, and again, good defensive work by the Redskins, starting to shut down the Dallas running game. Clarence Bond driving him out of bounds. As a defense, though, you, you make some plays like that, and you stop the, uh, the, the Cowboy offense, and then your punt returner gives the ball back to him on a, on, a, on a simple play like that, where all he had to do was run away from the ball and leave it, because he really wasn't going to gain very much by picking it up. Well, Washington has not been a strong team in the fourth quarter, as that graphic information would indicate. Some people would say that's because they've got a little age along their defensive unit. Second down and nine. First down pass. Kelvin Martin was driven back, but if they give him the forward progress, he should have a first down. Meanwhile, there's a flag down back in the backfield. Once again, Dexter Manley is helping out the officials and directing them on where the action was and where he feels it should go. So you see him, he's having a discussion with Jerry Markbright. Holding number 61, offense, second down. Nate Newton, once again, watch him right at the bottom of your screen. He's number 61. He's working against Daryl Grant, punches off there. Now he picks up Dexter Manley wraps him around the waist and finally tries to bring him down because he lost him on the exchange when they're running the game. And of course, uh, he got nabbed. Dallas has just picked up their 132nd penalty of the season. And that's a, a new team record for them. It's been a big problem. Tom Landry acknowledges it. Says those things come from uh, lots of concentration and the inexperience of his young team. Second and 19, Walker. It's only about five, and this Redskin defense has really picked it up here in the second half. Neil Okowitz and Alvin Walton driving back Walker, third down. One of the things that you see the Redskins defensive line doing is they're rotating their people in and out. Now Del Grant is coming out along with Dave Butts. They're getting some of the younger guys in there, letting them get an opportunity to go after the passer. And they've switched back and forth from that 4-3 to the 3-4 been effective for them at times and they've been burned a couple of times with it. A lot of that 46 look when they go to that 3-4 line. Right up. Go down at 17. Delore gets some time up the middle and it is cut for a first down. Down to the 27-yard line, Michael Irvin with another Dallas first down and they are threatening once more. Steve Pelour has proved that he, when he gets the time to pass the football, he is very effective. Now, you're going to see right in the middle of your screen, Michael Irving, number 88, coming out of the right part of your screen, right to the middle. Steve Pelour just puts this one on the frozen rope, and that's an easy thing to do today, and gets it to Michael <laughs> Irving down the field. He got that right. <laughs> His first down, Dallas, at the 28-yard line. Steve Pelour, five-year man out of the University of Washington. He's been going barehanded out there all day long, and he's been effective. 20 of 33, 321 yards. Rafferty knocked backwards by Charles Mann. This one may be against Washington. No. And again, it's Pelora getting the rap. Steve's going, hey, I really didn't mean to do that. But watch the head and shoulders now. That's where he's getting that action at. You see those shoulders snapping. Down. You're jerking the shit out of you. <laughs> I guess that one was made pretty clear. <laughs> well, part of the NFL color down there on the field. 
Chicago has edged out Detroit 13 to 12. That's now final. Kevin Butler's 33 yard field goal in the final second. So the Bears move to 12 and 3. First down. 15. That's intended for Walker. Incomplete. Danny White. Sweeney on the right of your screen. Talking things over with Landry. And they'll both signal in. You'll get decoys from one of them. And the real play from the other. Second and 15. Ball sitting at the 32-yard line of Washington with 8.48 to go. We're tied at 17. Pelor headed for the sideline. Well short of the first down. He'll have third and about eight still to go. Redskins send on Coleman. Two more defensive backs. Woodbury and Gage. And the pass rushers, Hamilton. Dean Hamill. Don't be surprised here if you see the Cowboys try some kind of a draw play, though. Uh, with all of that upfield rush that they know they're going to face, why not slip that ball off and give it to Herschel Walker? He's been very effective for him out of the backfield. Irvin comes in for Chandler offensively. So they've got Gay, Irvin, and Martin. Wide receivers across. Sacked by Coleman. The ball is loose, but play is whistled in. Monty Coleman, he's still running down to the end zone, but it's only for exercise. But he made clean blitz sack <laughs> on Pelor. And he gave the football to the fans. He just put it up in the stand. Merry Christmas for money. <laughs> yeah, he's too tired to run back. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, though. He came from the top of your screen unmolested on this play. You see him, number 51. He just kisses Steve Pelor right here, and that's not a Christmas kiss. He gives it up. But now watch him. He crawls for the ball, picks it up, realizes that, hey, nobody touched me. I'm just going to take off with the ball and take my chances on getting the score. Here's another look at it. Coleman, unmolested again, just comes in and just really pops Steve Fuller. Now, Steve's got to read that side. That's the hot side because he's right-handed. He just did not see him coming. So Dallas will have to punt. Saxon angling for the corner. Line shot. And that's a dandy. Manny Hendricks diving at the goal line, kept the ball upfield, and they're going to mark it at the four-yard line. Good job by the Cowboy punting in it. We'll be right back. Suddenly, there's a whole new way of looking. And Dan Jiggins at RFK Stadium, 8.02 to play regulation time. We're tied at 17. That young man has had quite an afternoon despite all of this kind of activity. He has been under siege, man, not just pressure. Sacked twice, hurried 11 times, eight knockdowns. Ed Jones got the hand up on the ball. Not uh, Ed Jones, pardon me, uh, Dave Butts. And interceptions, only one. 20 for 34 for Pelor, 321 yards on the day, Dan. He's played awfully well. He sure has. That's, you're going to get those kinds of numbers when you throw the football as much as the Cowboys have been throwing it today. Mark Griffin continues for Doug Williams for the Redskins, deep in their own territory. Overthrowing our punt. And Gary Clark has to be wondering, does he need lifts in his shoes so he can get a little bit taller going down the field so the quarterbacks can see him? Because he was running along that uh, sideline wide open, nothing between him and the end zone except a couple of white yard markers. You see, he settles back in there, though, and I'm sure he'll mention that to Rip. Hey, you know, I think I had that one again. If you, if you see it again, put it up there for me. Second and 10, the four-yard line, all up and into the lineup. Ricky Sanders, third wide out for the Redskins. Get 
Oliphant from the end zone. Oliphant up to the 10-yard line. Albrecht with quite a lick on him. Three Cowboys converging. We talked about Mike Oliphant and what he has to do to make this team and kind of assure himself like during the offseason the, the Redskins and Bobby Bethard and Joe Gibbs and all those people feel very, very comfortable with him. you got to make your moves now and in the last game of the regular season. And that's certainly what he's doing. He's making the best of this situation. Well, the University of Puget Sound is not known for churning out high draft picks. Here's a guy, pick number two, and he didn't play high school football. He was actually playing on a semi-pro team when he was recruited to Puget Sound. What an interesting story, that young man. Seven defensive backs in on third down for Dallas. Ripping up field. He's got Gary Clark in it. Picked out. Robert Williams to the 23 yard line of the Redskins. Boy, Danny Clark was wide open, but the ball seemed to hang up from Rippin. Well, Rip puts this one up a little soft. Now, watch him when he pulls out. He lost this ball and tries to put a little touch on it. When you go downfield, you got to gun it. And you got to get set up right in that end zone and you, to loft it out there. He just simply comes up short with it. Now, watch uh, Williams. He takes off, makes a nice little run back here, gets a couple of blocks along the way. But you know that uh, Tom Landry's got to be a little bit excited about the developments. You know, these guys came into the, this ball game with only 17 turnovers, uh, 14 turnovers, and now that's their fourth one of the day. First down, Dallas at the 25-yard line. Herschel Walker, Todd Bowles did a good job to hold on after the hit he took from the runner. Yeah, Herschel kind of turned that one around on Todd. Todd comes up to try to make the stop, and Herschel runs over him. Here it is now. Herschel's going to come up right between that, that off-tackle play there. Again, he's getting a nice trap block by Newton. Hurdles the offense at the, the line of scrimmage and runs over Todd Bowles, and Todd just simply gets in his way and finally brings him down. Redskins and Cowboys have both hurt themselves with turnovers during the course of the year. The Cowboys, third interception suffered here. That one by Rippon. As Walker gets about three before Wilbur Marshall and Todd Bowles stop him. Herschel Walker is an unbelievable running back sometimes. Now watch him on this play. Dave Butts comes in and watch Herschel put this little hesitation stall move on him right here. Now watch him. He's just going to fake Dave out there. You see him do that little dip back and then take off back up through the line of scrimmage. Those are those kinds of things that make a running back very special. Walker has 95 yards on 25 carries. Walker hit hard by Olkowitz and Walton. Got about two with forward progress as he had to hurdle a couple of fallen players in front of him. From RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., Tim Ryan and Dan Jiggetts uh, watching an emotion-filled fourth quarter. 5.22 to play. We're tied at 17. And while the teams have suffered with turnovers and the cold weather here in Washington, they have been giving it all they've got. Doug Williams having to watch from the sidelines, having suffered a bruised shoulder, and he was buried by Danny Noonan. Roger Ruzik warming up in case he is needed here. Third down. Cowboys would like to get the big six. The fade to the corner. Touchdown. Michael Irvin's third of the afternoon. The Miami rookie. Michael Irvin's trying to make rookie of the year in one ball game. Well, Irvin, who uh, missed a few games earlier with an ankle injury, meant to be an impact player when he was drafted number one. Steve Pallor on target again. His third strike to Irvin. Now, once again, Todd Bowles is going to try to slip off over here and help his guy out in the corner, but he comes up on the double coverage, and you see it's too late. Now, watch. You'll see Todd Bowles coming right in that part of your screen, number 23, but he's simply too late. He started over there as soon as the ball was snapped and just did not get there on time. Music for the point after. And he's got it. So the Cowboys, who led 3-zip and 10-3 at halftime, have taken the lead again. 24-17. to
The Dallas Cowboys, 24 to 17. Steve Fuller, three touchdown passes to rookie Michael Irvin. Fuller, 21 of 35, 333 yards, three touchdowns, just one intercept. Another fine afternoon for him as he follows up last week's effort, even in the losing cause against the tough Cleveland Browns. Fuller has been quoted recently after he was benched, saying, seems like I do my best when I don't think, when I just play. And certainly today, uh, if he isn't thinking, he's playing awfully well. I've heard a lot of football players say that. <laughs> well, you know, I think earlier on, it was it was Fuller himself who felt maybe, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm really just concentrating too hard out here. Just let it flow and let it go, and that's what he's doing today. Sanders from the goal line. Hit hard. Ken Norton recovered a fumble moments ago, makes the hit. Tim, we talked about it before, this Washington Redskins uh, defense, when they put nine men up on the line of scrimmage, there's only two defensive backs back there. One is Woodbury, and the other one is back uh, in the back of your screen, and that's uh, number 23, Todd Bowles. You can't see him right now, but sooner or later you're going to see him flash back out into the side of the screen. Those are the two guys back there. This is the third time Michael Irvin has beat them on that defense. Uh, Clark Kent has just taken off his uh, street suit and retaking the field for the Washington Redskins, Doug Williams, who came off the bench last week to rally the Redskins to victory over the Eagles. Bruce Shoulder and all is out there. And hits Gary Clark for a first down out to the 32-yard line of the Redskins. Don't forget, more action ahead here on CBS, our doubleheader day, the Saints and the San Francisco 49ers, a huge one in the NFC West. Atlanta at the L.A. Rams. If Williams can rally and get a victory for Washington, their slender playoff hopes will be still somewhat alive, and they'll need a victory by Atlanta over the Rams. And again next week by the Falcons, along with additional help. 4-0-3 to play. Complete to Sanders. First down, Washington. Walls on the tackle. Talked about that championship level, turning it up a notch when you know you have to. Now watch Sanders right here, turning it up a notch. Doug Williams comes off the bench with the bruised shoulder, still is able to throw this ball on the dime here. Now when he knows that things really count in this ball game. That's the kind of thing the champions are made of, though. You look for that little extra intangible, and that's what uh, a guy like Doug Williams seems to have. New York Giants enhance their chances. A victory over Kansas City today. They win next week. They've won the NFC East. Free and clear. They play the Jets next week. Williams. Complete to Art Monk. First down at the Dallas 13-yard line. Big pressure on Doug Williams. He, this guy doesn't know anything else but hard work. He just gets back there and does his job. Gets knocked down in the process, but he gets this football off to Art Monk. And Art Monk does some serious damage downfield. Now watch again. Doug Williams takes the hit here. One of, some of it's from Jim Jeffcoat. He just delivers the blow right to his ribs. But Doug hangs in there and lost that ball downfield and is successful on the play. Six catches for Art Monk today. Doug Williams, the Miracle Man. This might be the first time this season that a Redskins receiver has had over 100 yards in reception. Short drop, the fade. Almost picked off by Williams. Robert Williams. The coverage on Clark, the ball a little short. You hear the displeasure of the Redskins fans. They thought that Williams kind of backed up into him. And he's just simply playing the football, though. He has a right to that football down there in the end zone. He looks for it and tries to slap it down. And Clark can't get to it. Robert Williams, who took the corner spot away from Ron Francis during the course of the season. Cowboys secondary and not in their strength during the season. Teams pass on him. Williams is doing it now. Deeper drop this time for Williams out of the end zone intended for Oliphant Williams signaling over to the Redskins sideline I think he's got the play he wants well he was trying to get Mike Oliphant to come back flat across the field so he could get the ball to him 
because he was, the pattern that he was running, he was running it too deep, running to a spot in the end zone that Doug just could not reach. So when you see your quarterback in trouble, you'll work back to him a little bit so you give him that open spot to pass the football into. Third down. 2-10 to play. Monk in motion. Short man cannot hold on. Intended for Gary Clark. And a good job by Michael Down because Downs grab Clark as the ball arrived and Clark could not keep up with the projectile moving pocket here watch Williams roll out to his right sets up out there behind his uh his uh his tight end now he's going to try to come back across the field says no thanks better and tries to dump it off to the short man just can't catch it Jeff Bostic is committed center he made the decision to go for it on fourth Fourth down, they're going for it. Incomplete. Intended for Oliphant. A little off target from Williams. Well, Doug Williams, who marched him up the field, did not finish it off on fourth down. 1.59 to go, and the Dallas defense holds. We'll be back with a two-minute warning at RFK Stadium in a moment. Now, Doug Williams is going to try to go to Mike Oliphant here. He's going to run a circle route, and unfortunately for Mike Oliphant, he just doesn't get to the football, and Doug Williams was adamant about it, things after the pass. He felt that he put it in there for Oliphant to get his hands on it. He should have caught the football. Now, watch the reaction of Doug Williams. He's going to get over and have a discussion with uh, young Mike Oliphant on the, near the sideline of the Washington Redskins. Well, a disappointed Doug Williams because uh, he had marched him right down there in a position to tie this game up and uh, coming back in with that bruised shoulder after Mark Griffin had uh, given him a little breather and Griffin had thrown a touchdown pass of his own. 1.59 to go. The Dallas Cowboys who have lost 10 straight games are 1.59 away from victory number three against their old and traditional rivals, the Redskins. And for Steve Fuller, an impressive afternoon, 21 of 35, 333 yards and three touchdowns. Just one interception. A pretty impressive afternoon for that young man as well, number 34, Herschel Walker. Walker approaching the 100-yard mark. Got about a half a yard on that play. And now for an NFL update, let's take you to Brent Musburger in New York. But, Tim, the New York Giants are chanting, bring on the Jets. It'll come down to that game for the NFC Eastern Division title as Phil Sims hit tight end Mark Lavarro for two touchdowns today. The Giants roll over Kansas City. Back to Tim. All right, Brent. The uh, Giants, of course, as uh, Brent indicated, they beat the, the Jets. They win the division. And, indeed, uh, if Philly loses to Dallas next week, that'll do it for the Giants. And Dallas will be at home against the Eagles. And, the huge game that's going to be. Well, it's kind of hard to convince everyone that these Dallas Cowboys, these young guys are for real. I think this game certainly ser serves notice on everybody else that uh, come 1989, it's going to be a different story down in Dallas. Well, and Steve Fuller, I think, uh, has now uh, taken a solid lead despite, despite the uh, continued Troy Aikman bowl talk. And by the way, uh, should uh, Dallas and Green Bay both win today and the Packers still leading Minnesota with under two minutes to go. They're up 18 to 6. Green Bay would still hold that position uh, for the first pick in the draft. It's not a position as a head coach you want to be in a whole lot of times. No, you sure don't, but uh, it's a little bit of compensation. New Orleans on top of the 49ers. That game underway. Double hitter action ahead on CBS Sports. Many of you will see that game. Others will see Atlanta at the Rams. Fuller rolling out of there. He wants to throw it, but he's going to run it. Bowles tackles it at the line of scrimmage. 144 to go. Well, that changes things a little bit. Third down upcoming. Redskins still get the ball back. They can stop the Cowboys here.
time out on the field. Fuller will go and talk things over. Tom Landry. Fowler comes into the backfield, meanwhile, and Flack goes out. So next week, Dallas at home to the Philadelphia Eagles, and uh, should they win here today, what a confidence builder it'll be, beating the Redskins and knowing that uh, they can play a role, at least, in what happens in the playoff picture. If it comes down to that next week in this very complex playoff situation, pretty exciting coming down to the final weekend. And you know the Eagles are going to go into Big D thinking, hey, look, if we win this ball game, we'll have to let everything else fall into place, but at least we get, we've done everything we possibly can to make the playoffs. Philadelphia with that tight win yesterday that they needed so desperately, eliminating Phoenix. Dallas now on third down. Big play for the Redskins here. Fuller throwing it deep down the sideline, way overthrown. Redskins had good coverage on Michael Irvin. Barry Wilburn with him step for step, and so the Redskins will get the ball back with a lot of time. 137 still to play. When you talk about veteran teams, a minute and 37 seconds is an eternity. It is now final. The Packers over Minnesota, 18 to 6, combined with a Chicago win. The Bears got to be feeling pretty good today getting through with Jim Harbaugh, quarterback, and the man about ready to come back. And you laughed at my stat about Green Bay over Minnesota, eight out of the last ten times. He picked that one, Big Dan. Anthony Allen gets him to the 42-yard line of Dallas. Garth Jacks on the tackle, 128 still to play. Well, now. Redskin fans come to their feet. A lot of them have left the stadium already. Those who are here know full well that uh, they've got plenty of time with Doug Williams coming onto the field at quarterback. No problem. That Green Bay victory over Minnesota has clinched the NFC Central title for the Chicago Bears. Minnesota naturally figures to be there in the playoff picture anyway not as the division champ. Williams gets some time, short man at Sanders. Trying to get loose, cannot do it. Picks up about eight. He's inside the 35 yard line. They spotted at the 33. 115 and ticking. Williams, a low bullet to Art Monk. See the thing that Doug's doing. He knows he's got around a minute to go, so he's taking what the defense is giving him now. And that's always going to be inside, not to the sideline. Taking advantage of that and just chipping away at it. Has the first down at the 30. Gary Clark cannot hold on. Hit from behind by Robert Williams. Box stop with 46 seconds remaining. Gary Clark will come down to the bottom of your screen now. You're going to see him on the slant inside. This ball is delivered on time and in the right place, and Gary Clark just simply does not hold on to the football. This is the time of the ball game. You've got to make those kinds of plays. Absolutely, and again, uh, not a guy who drops the easy no. pass, but uh, dropped one there. Second down. Monk in motion. Sanders wide right. Williams gets good protection. Warren to the 20-yard line. Don Warren, the tight end, 33 seconds. And Williams goes to the ground to stop the clock at 28. Now you're just, you're down on about your 20 your 19 yard line. You're Doug Williams. You start thinking now you're going to work in the end zone because if the ball if the ball escapes anybody, at least it goes out of the end zone and, and no one else can intercept the football. So now you want to start thinking working to the back of that end zone. You got uh, 28 seconds remaining on the clock, and you're going to have a couple of shots at it. But first of all, you got to deal with fourth down. You establish yourself with a short pass, get the first down, and then start working that end zone. Redskins with one timeout remaining. Williams gets lots of time, goes deep, and it is batted away at the final instant by Michael Downs, intended for Warren. 22 seconds. Donnie Warren was wide open, 
Well, Michael Downs makes a big time play there. Closes on it real nice. Gets that hand up in there and slaps it away. Here's another look at it. You see Downs is beat all the way. Warren's wide open in the end zone. Just reaches in there. Closes on the football. Reaches in there and slaps it away. So now good the ball, by Michael Downs. The ball looked like it floated in there a little bit, whether it was the wind or the way Williams wanted to throw it to Warren that time, but it gave Downs time to get over there and knock it away. So the Cowboys take over with 22 seconds to play at their 20-yard line. The Redskins nearly forcing overtime, but this inspired young Cowboy team just refusing to wilt. You see Garth Jacks giving Tom Landry congratulations. And you see Tom Landry smiling on the sideline. Boy, 10 weeks in a row without a victory smile. And Steve Pelora had himself quite an afternoon. Gets a congratulation from Manley, of all people. And Joe Gibbs and Tom Landry, two somewhat besieged coaches, meet each other at midfield. And so for Dan Jenkins, this is Tim Ryan saying so long. From RFK Stadium in Washington with the final score, the Dallas Cowboys 24, the Washington